we're live. <laughs> now, now we're live. We are, as, we are, as another person leaves the room. Yeah, we're actually live now. <laughs> Dan, can you give me a soda? What do you want? Yeah, uh, one of my Pepsis. What does everyone else want? I, I'm good. I'm just here for the riveting dialogue and soda gathering. Oh, I suppose. Sorry for the lateness. Uh, we had some technical issues, and now we're online. I'm gonna say that uh, Andy had technical issues. I was fine. Yeah, the I audio worked 100. percent Will not have any of this. He stole one of my Pepsis. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's not. Then it's fighting words. It's video cast. Fight. More importantly, this will be a conversation topic when Nick gets back. What that he had no soda? Yes. He's got all the food. That's true. What? No, I'm, I'm just I'm uh, loading I'm, things up, so I apologize. For the <laughs> exciting life commentary. The real sto show starts later. Oh, there's audio going through my laptop. That's, I didn't want. <laughs> we know what we're doing. There's nobody watching us anyway. <laughs> So we're waiting for Nathan. He's in the crapper. Yes. Presumably enjoying himself. Has the situation improved? Yeah. Are All we right. going now? It, we're, we're live now. We've been live awesome. for like the last five minutes. I want to ask why this is next to your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just, you know, you have a 10-inch spray template. Yeah. By the toilet. It's important to measure your spray before you... To be, to be perfectly system. honest, I was using it as a back scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly back. No. <laughs> I'm unclean now. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yep. All right, well, right, did, I don't know. Did you guys say welcome to episode whatever, whatever? No, I don't even know that's what we're in. <laughs> okay. I'm not here to help. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? I'm going to go put this back because I'm confused. <laughs> uh, welcome to episode 92. I'm Nathan. <laughs> I'm Troll Jeff. I'm Andy. I'm Dan. Christ. <laughs> It's Monday. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Uh, do we next week's War Machine weekend? That's exciting. That yeah, seems like a pretty big announcement. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not the next weekend after this episode because no, we're recording on Monday. If we don't want to get into an argument about the next weekend meeting, then yes, November seventh through, yeah. through the ninth is War Machine weekend. This weekend is Halloween. Next weekend is War Machine weekend. You can't even argue this weekend, this no, weekend, I, uh, this time, because we're on Monday. If we were on yeah. Sunday, we could fight. Yeah. To the death. You, you could do that anyways. It's kind of fun. Just <laughs> for the hell of it. Yeah. Fight to the death with Tim Tams. Four Tim Tams. All right, that's an announcement. More countries are sending us food. That's I endorse cool. this idea. So we had Germans two weeks ago now? Just last week? Last week. Last week. Oh, but I was here again because we watched a terrible movie. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Germans last week, and now Australians this week, and then uh, Pip said he was going to send us some British stuff. So we're just going to keep getting an influx of food from various countries. <laughs> I was going to say something horrible, and I decided not to. We just created a new whole new segment. <laughs> How is that a crazy food? Not I usually saying hold, something horrible. <laughs> I, usually say, I usually hold back. It's, it's generally everybody else on the podcast that doesn't hold back. That is true. I hate this microphone. Um... I'm not used to the height of this. I don't have my microphone. I think this is Jeremy's or Brian's or somebody's. What's why, why don't you like that microphone? Because it's at a different angle. You can adjust that. I know. Well, I tried, but it was noisy and it was stiff, and then I just left it alone. That's what Relaine said <laughs> about my penis. You, yes. You, yes, gotcha. I understood that reference. So I have canned food. That's my announcement. War Machine Weekend is next weekend. Halloween yep. is this weekend. Uh, we don't have any events coming up, do we? Well, no, nothing, nothing, nothing much. Nothing much coming up. War Machine up. Weekend is pretty much it. The, the, I can say this, the press, the, the Steamroller beta exists. Talk to your local press ganger about trying it out on a local night or an event. That's the extent of my details about the beta, is that it exists. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a Sasquatch uh, <laughs> sighting. 
Yeah. It's all the beta. Yeah, it's hot. Go, go, go talk to your local hunter about Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, actually, go talk to your local press kinger about Sasquatch. <laughs> so, Andy, tell me about Sasquatch. Sasquatch? Ah, he's my friend. <laughs> There's nothing you've never seen before. <laughs> Sasquatch a... is something I've never seen before. Thank you. I didn't want that Venture Brothers line to just flap out there like a dead dick, but it was. <laughs> well, I was going to try to... I, could, I was trying to remember a Tenacious D reference, and I couldn't. I, all I know is that Sasquatch was their, their drummer for a little bit before Dave Grohl joined him. And screwed up their music. Didn't turn it into jazz. Uh, well, no, <laughs> they, they did that. But, I know but they did. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I don't like the full... I like the just the two guitars version of Tenacious D. Sure. I Not don't the full that. band. Some of the stuff with the full band was okay, but yeah, I could... You said before it was too high. No, I didn't. And now you put it no. higher. No, I said it was the wrong height. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can go on about Tenacious D. Don't let my microphone distract you. No, I was pretty much done with okay. that topic. It wasn't much further than that, other than I don't like what Dave Grohl did to da- Tenacious D. Well, I kind of thought it was one of those bands that is better the, the less hard it tries. Like, it really needs to just not try to do yeah. much, and then it ends up being better as a result. Yeah, I, I like their, their show. It was much better when it was just on HBO. Yeah. And, you know, they're just doing the, those there, and yeah, they just yeah. kind of... Went too big, I think. Yeah, exactly. I like Jack Black when he was a singing milk machine on uh, Mr. Show. I'm unfamiliar with that, but I can put the pieces together. They took the old song, uh, the old st- uh, joke about uh, the traveling salesman and his car breaks down outside a farm and whatever, he goes there and... and uh, the, for some reason, he finds out the farmer's daughter... There's a glory hole, basically. And the farmer's <laughs> daughter is on the other side of the glory hole. And then there's, like, different glory holes, and, like, the first one's... Oh, yeah, the, the first one's really nice, and then the second one's even better, and the third one, like, rips his dick off. And the farmer explains that the first one was his daughter, the second one was his wife, and the third one was the milking machine. And so this episode of Mr. Show took that and turned it into a musical, yep. like a Broadway <laughs> extravaganza musical, and Jack Black was the milk machine. He came out at the end and just sang about the hard life that he has to live as a lonely milk machine <laughs> out on the farm. It's a great episode. Yeah, I, I, my other favorite episode of uh, of Mr. Show is with the guy who had to run around with the giant sandwich board sign that said, I'm with Rapist. <laughs> <sighs> I love the, the whole running gag of the like arms race between two competing companies to sell mayonnaise mustard hybrid <laughs> with must mayo stirred mayonnaise and the commercials <laughs> they have are amazing that sequence of the commercial are great with abraham lincoln in a yellow and white striped t- suit complete with the stove type hat like with a machine gun just liberating slaves from their drudgery of spreading mayonnaise and mustard separately <laughs> he's like guns <laughs> down the slave owners <laughs> oh my god so good uh, my other announcement is that Will Hahn, a.k.a. Pip, uh, Matthew uh, Compton, Rohan Davis, and Tristan, whose last name I don't know, are all better than the rest of you because they played Borderlands the pre-sequel with me. I don't have a PC that can really run that. My PC is terrible and it runs it fine. Well, I'm still enjoying the game. Yeah. No, that's yeah. fine. You're just playing it on the PlayStation, right? Yeah. 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 Somebody at work was talking about buying an Xbox, and I almost punched him in the face. <laughs> like, my fiance wants an Xbox One, and I was going to punch her. And I'm like, get a PlayStation. She's like, no, the Xbox is better at multiplayer. And then I killed her. <laughs> that actually seems appropriate. That is yeah. not an overreaction. I'm like, how? How is it? And she's like, it is. How? It just <laughs> is. Would you like to provide some rationale behind that? Nope. Nope. <sighs> she would not. <laughs> it's always interesting to check out the, the sales of the Xbox in Japan. <laughs> it's, it's, please buy this <laughs> and when he says the sales of the Xbox that's because there's literally one of them they have one on a KB toy shelf just waiting for somebody to accidentally buy it so lonely <laughs> it is really lonely they keep putting the Playstation 4 signs close to it and hope someone gets confused <laughs> it's <laughs> wearing a disguise <laughs> it's a limited edition Yes. one of my good friends from high school uh, he, he ended up uh, getting his kids uh, a new Xbox and I, I thought maybe he got him an Xbox One because that might be slightly better. But no, he, Xbox 360. Just now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cutting edge. <laughs> well, it's got a bigger library available to it, I guess. Yeah, I yeah mean, that's true. If, if you haven't played the games before, like how old are his kids? Because nah, they're, they're old enough to play video games. 
No, so. well then you should just give them a good system instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Take it back one more step back to the uh, PlayStation 2 or earlier. PlayStation 2 and uh, um, Super Nintendo, I think, mm. are the two best platforms as far as game libraries go. I, I'll, I'll agree with that. I've got some very fond memories of PlayStation 1, but those games did not age well. Also, PlayStation 2 is fully backwards compatible, that so you're true. covered. <laughs> you still need the PlayStation 1 memory cards, though. Yeah, which is kind of weird, but, you know, they're there. It, the PlayStation is kind of weird. They do that. <laughs> I, um... When I was in junior high, I bought myself a PlayStation 1, like, with my own, my own allowance money and lawn mowing money. I was all excited and everything. And I got home, and the first game I had for it was, um... Blood Omen, Legacy of Cain. Mm -hmm. And I was playing it, and I played for like 12 hours over the weekend. Um, and I called my mom at work, and I said, Mom, you need to stop and buy me a memory card. Because I didn't know about the concept <laughs> of memory card. And so I'm like, you need to get me a memory card on your way home. And then she got home, and she's like, oh, they were all sold out. They didn't have memory cards. And the thing was, this was like October, and she thought she was being really clever, and she bought it for me, and she was going to give it to me for Christmas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I got to play those first 12 hours of Blood Omen again. <laughs> that, that's, that's much better than my PlayStation 1 story, which is pretty much the same thing, where I saved up all my money to buy a PlayStation. I knew I had to have a memory card, yeah. but I didn't put think about having the money to buy a game. So for two weeks straight, I played the demo disc that came with it, <laughs> until my mother finally felt bad about it and picked me up a game. What game? Ogre Battle, the, the, the Ooh, release. There and you go. Yeah. At least it was a good game. I played the hell out of that. Yeah. Which, by the way, there's no really beating that game if you do anything else. Like, I beat the game for the first time. It's like, yeah, we're glad you helped out the nation. By the way, you weren't good enough. We're going to murder you. Like, what? What <laughs> What do you mean? Like, well... Do better. We, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I wasn't evil enough to be a tyrant, but I wasn't good enough to be the replacement king. So, you know, like, we can't have anybody else knowing you helped the revolution. So, sorry, you gotta go. Okay, <laughs> bye. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's how it cut out. It's like, and we're going to kill you, huh? <laughs> Here's a, probably a good topic we should talk about. Is uh, what what video game from your childhood would you like to see remade into a into a three D unfortunately or a, new, a new version? My answer for the last twenty goddamn years did a, like a year ago. Bionic Commando, XCOM. Oh yeah, XCOM mm -hmm. for like twenty years. I would have I I constantly said if they re released XCOM with updated graphics, it would be the greatest game ever because it already is the greatest game ever. And then they did. So I don't have a new one yet. I, I have one. You just you touched upon it. I want the Legacy of Kane series to be yeah. re rebuilt as an HD remix, especially Soul Reaver, because Soul Reaver is such a good game. I remember in I forget because it bounced back and forth between the two series. I forget which one it was. I think it was Soul Reaver Two, where I had a buddy come up and we were playing it together. Even though it's a single player game, like we both were so hardcore in the series, we were basically like handing off the controller between the levels so we could both just experience the story together, almost like watching a movie, yeah. but one of us had to help the movie along. And when we got to the point where they revealed that it was Raziel's fault that Malik wasn't there in the opening cutscene of the first game, we both, like, shit our pants and freaked out. It was such an amazing <laughs> plot twist. Like, that was, like, six cents dead the whole time, mind-blowing to the two of us. Yeah. And my, my first wife at the time was just like, you two are such such nerds. <laughs> she was just like, oh my god, you losers. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that series needs an HD remake, I mean, to, to bring it back into play. And Rene Uh Yeah, well, yeah. he's, yeah, he's the... Otho, Odo he's from, Odo uh, from, from Deep, Deep Space, Space Nine. Nine. Oh. Yeah, he was in it. He was uh, uh, Yano Saldron. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they have a, they had a really good voice cast. I mean, that's back in the PlayStation Two days, and that the voice acting of that was just well, immense. Tony J as the Elder God, yeah, and he is what, like that. His voice, like it, you've got like your Vincent Price and your James Earl Jones and your Tony J. Like those are those like iconic voices. Yeah, even people who don't know who don't, Tony J is, I guarantee in their head they have a dozen of his performances that are their favorite voices they've ever heard. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those voices like butter. Yeah. So what else? Megabyte? He was Megabyte? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, God. So good. There's a, there's a show that if you ever try to go back and watch Reboot... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. Oh. It has... So it, it It's not the worst held up. It's not the worst as far as nostalgia holding up. I've had worse. I made the terrible mistake of watching a rerun of Hong Kong Fui, which I loved <laughs> yeah. when I was a little kid, and that is the yeah. worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's what that's what the relaunch of the original Thundercats did to me. I yeah. remember loving it as a kid and Toonami got it. I was gonna watch it and I watched like 
an episode and go, oh, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, but uh, it, on on the other hand, the Masters of the Universe that was from the eighties. That's that's horrible. I cannot stand watching that. But the Masters of the Universe, the remake that came out in, like mid two thousands, that mm-hmm. was actually pretty solid. I've heard a lot of those reboots have turned out really good. Like even the Thundercats like reboot was supposed to be really solid. But I'll, I'll set Andy up. Hey Andy, what's uh, one of your favorite villain lines immediately before <laughs> executing somebody? Uh, it was with Skeletor. He had, he kidnapped King Randor, and he was about to. He was like, King Randor, would you please scream while you fall down this cliff? Because I want to know how deep this hole goes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered how deep this is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, so good. Yeah. No, the, the 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 original episode of the new the new series is pretty decent. I. I haven't gotten past that point because I've only shown everybody else the first like, three episodes. <laughs> but they're so good, though. They're it's fucking Mechanek. Mechanek is, uh, Mechanek is pretty much the most useless hero ever because they have Stratos right there. Yeah. You're like, my power is my neck could be long, so I can see over this slightly inconvenient hedge. And this other dude's like, I can fly. <laughs> Yeah, but my neck is slightly longer. <laughs> he does headbutt somebody. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking neck and neck. They're mm. going to find some sort of contrived use for it. They've got to, right? Yeah. As opposed to, like, watch me look over this fog. I think headbutting hedge. someone and looking over a hedge are literally the only two possible uses for neck and neck's power. Or pee pee Tom. <laughs> well, that was covered under the hedge thing, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she rods always like, is neck and neck around? Where's neck and neck at? <laughs> So, uh, a couple of people mentioned Mega Man Legends. You know, I've never gotten a chance to play that one. I've I always wanted have. to, but... Yeah. Never have. No. I, I, like, I know but there's... I've heard. I play... I, the same buddy I was talking about with the Soul Reaver thing, he had Mega Man Legends, and he played the shit out of it in, in uh, high school. Yeah. And I never played any of them, but I know some people that are, like, gung-ho religious yeah, about I've heard those some games. really like, big things about it, and it's a hard game to find nowadays. Yeah. But, like, the whole series and, like, the misadventures of Trombone and all the spin-off games, like, these people... Like, they get rabid about them yeah. the way some people are about, like, the Game of Thrones books and stuff well, like that. yeah, Mega Man's huge. Uh, well, but Mega Man had a really big decline, and Legends was right towards the end of that. Mm-hmm. Like, like because you, you had all these awesome Mega Man games on the on Nintendo, and they went over to the Super Nintendo and brought out Mega Man X, which was the best thing ever. Yep. And they had, yep. like, three or four of those that were really good, and then suddenly Mega Man started, I don't know, running out of ideas or, or themes to take over. I, it just started to fade and fall off. End up with like Mega Man. Um, I think eight was the last eight was one. the last. Well, nine and ten came out eventually, right. but eight was the last one in the normal run. Although, goddamn, Mega Man nine is amazing. Oh yeah, well because Mega Man nine is fucking amazing. Because it's fucking the hard. It is. One. <laughs> it is hard, but it's Nintendo hard. Like it's yeah. yeah. No. It's like you can do it. You just gotta spend your time and yeah. take your death. So, but all the bosses are fun. The levels are fun. The music's fun. Mega Man nine is amazing. Oh, yeah. Ten's good too, but nine I can play nine infinitely. Yeah, no, I I, I like nine. I like ten. They're pretty awesome. Um, somebody else did, did mention Double Dragon as well, but Double Dragon already had a just HD remake, yeah. and that's Double Dragon Neo. Yeah, I I I can't help but laugh at that one. It's so, <laughs> so 80s kitsch, like the the cassette decks and the ridiculous music and the silly hair and costumes. Well, I guess there weren't costumes in the 80s; those were just clothes. <laughs> Do you have one, Dan? I'm trying to think, because a lot of the games that I like already have had HD remakes. Because I'm like, alright, uh, Metal Gear 1, they redid that, and actually it kind of got ruined, because that game was never built with 3D gaming. See, that's no. why I'm afraid to recommend things, because yeah, I mean, so, screw yeah, up my memories. Twin Snakes was awful compared to the first one, because it was so easy. Yeah, oh, The one for the GameCube? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I've got, I have that one. Yeah, I mean, I it was great, it. the graphics were nice, but it was just, like I said, the difficulty of it was built around the fact that you had this terrible aiming system, and then when you could do 3D aiming, it's like, oh, and a tranquilizer gun, you could just sneak through the entire thing so easily. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that, I mean, Diablo 2 has been redone several different ways now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stuff. From, yeah. Torchlight I mean, is basically Diablo 2, yeah. and then there's other yeah. competitors, exactly. like I I've previously mentioned, um, uh, Titan Quest... Yeah, you know, whatever. Well, that's the other thing. Is I have a full generation, I mean, less of games to go off of under, other than you guys, so I'm just trying to think of stuff that's, you know, I want to go back and play again and see an updated graphics. Most of the older games I like, I like because of the older graphics and stuff. I miss, I miss side-scrollers. I miss, you know, like, I hated, possibly just because of hipsterism slash, you know, rejection of things that are different, but I despise the Metroid Prime games. Because oh. I... 
Super Metroid and, and whatnot. That's Metroid mm -hmm. to me. The side-scrolling, yeah. you know, the Metroidvania. I don't like the 3D Metroids. I don't like the 3D Castlevanias. I like 2D side-scrolling exploration. I will say uh, this about Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime does do the 3D right. It yeah, feels see, very I, much like a Metroid game. Yeah. So yeah, Metroid Prime of that trilogy is definitely the best of the three. And yeah. then, like, two and three just are kind of like, look at the things we can do with, with the technology. Isn't that neat? Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to the first one really, really tried to create another Metroid title. Right. Um, and, and I'll be damned, that last boss fight was terror on your thumbs. <laughs> um, I don't think I've spoken to a single person who's gone through the last <laughs> boss fight with their thumbs not, like, red and sore. Not even, not even thumbs, just, like, all your fingers are couple tongues. Because you, yeah. you have to be dodging away, which is holding one button. You have to be aiming with one button. You have to be charging with another button. Yep, and <laughs> heaven forbid the thing charges you, because you have to quick hit a different button to sit there <laughs> yeah. into the ball and roll away. Oh, my God. It, yeah, I that was... I don't, I don't, I'm going to pick up my GameCube. <laughs> no, I, I, I liked Metroid Prime. I actually do like the 3D cast, some of the 3D Castlevanias, let me clarify, because there's a lot of bad ones. Um, the first two for the, the Super Nintendo. See, I played or, Castlevania or, 64, or, and yeah, then I burned the house I, down around it to I've be safe. I've heard one of those, like, myths, like um, Highlander 2. Yeah. People mention it, but it's not real. Or like Star Trek 5. Right, yeah. It just, yeah. Hey. Poor Star Trek V. <laughs> God, that's the most frustrating thing about Star Trek V is that there's so much potential in it. You yeah. know, it's like somebody had, like, they, 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 they drew, like, the outline to this great thing, and they built, like, they, they started to build, the, like, the the skeleton to some amazing mm -hmm. ship or something, and they're like, oh, this is going to be great, and then they just sprayed feces all over it. You know, like, why did you cover up all the good stuff with shit? Is this an odd-numbered Star Trek movie? Hey, 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 hey. hey. We, you take that back. Three's fine. Star Trek yes. three is fine. Yes, that's the one that breaks the rule. And Star Trek one's okay if you like four hour long, really boring dry sci fi. I, I and I say that not as a joke. Like if you enjoyed two thousand one A Space Odyssey, Star Trek the Motion Picture, the director's cut that fixes a lot of shit, is actually decent. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's just hey, we're gonna go on a drive by. Look at amazing Enterprise. <laughs> oh, there's a guy floating. Yay. Yay. It's a very um, pretty movie. It is very fucking pretty. <laughs> And an ominous too. There's a lot of uh, you make it sound more like a guided tour. It, it, it really is, is a guided tour. <laughs> it's a guided tour of the Enterprise, and then it's a guided tour of Viger, and then the movie ends. <laughs> oh, all right. Like nothing happens <laughs> in that movie. Well, Chekhov gets electrocuted. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then he gets uh, falls off of, and then he gets a bug put in his ear, and then he um. I forget what happens to him in three. He was in it. <laughs> and and we and just we just already previously said and that before he system. fell off of a, a aircraft of an aircraft carrier a vessel and yep. uh, yeah a nuclear vessel nuclear vessel <laughs> say nuclear vessel no no, no. <laughs> I lo God I love Walter Kenny that, my favorite <laughs> joke in that one not that that one's good too but the one where the person's like do people who hate Star Trek get to leave and no Kenning's you like, have to say no this is long Kenning's like well the person says do people who hate Star Trek get to leave and Kenning immediately goes that's a good question. <laughs> Because Penning sure hates Star Trek. After Star Trek, I became a well-rounded person and an actor. <laughs> he was good in uh, Babylon 5. Apparently people just have no response to that. I think uh, I'm the only person in this room who watched well, we had, it. We had a conversation before about Babylon 5. Like I tried to watch it, and it just did not sink its teeth into me. And so it just turned into alien soap opera, and I ignored it. Season 1 is the mandatory research assignment to be able to enjoy the genius that is Seasons 2, 3, and 4. See, and that's the thing is I didn't do my homework then. Yeah. So. Well, it's like, did you watch any more Parks and Recreation after we talked about it? Not yet, no. Okay. It, it's, it's on my to-do, but... Bully your way it. through a half dozen more mediocre episodes and then get to the genius. All right. I, I better unwrap Season 2 and be like a kid opening an N64 on Christmas. Yes. All right. It's, almost, it's like a that kid, kid opening a banana. A kid <laughs> opening an N64 nowadays. <laughs> Like, what well, the fuck is this? Hey, to be fair, I could turn that sucker around real fast. Yeah. Like, like if there was still a new one in box, yeah. it would be like, yay, college! Because <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Stadium. Yeah. I mentioned that the game that I liked from a kid that I was looking... I, I put in a... Um, 
uh, I put my name down on a list at the local used game shop for them to call me when a copy came in of Metal Warriors, and they called me, and they're like, yes, we have it, that's the good news, the bad news is it's super rare, so it's $200, and I said, never mind, let somebody else give you $200, I'll download an emulator. But Raylene, after hearing that story, she looked around to see if she could find it cheaper, like as a Christmas present or whatever, yeah. and she said that not only could she not find it cheaper than $200, but there was one new in box, and it had a comma in the price. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like, that goes. It goes the same. My kind of similar to my argument about uh, Dracula X. Dracula X for the Turbo Duo Yo, yeah. is it, that's the rare one. That's the hard one mm -hmm. to find. And unfortunately, they made a port over to the Super Nintendo version, or to the Super Nintendo for Dracula X, which is a horrible, horrible port. Yeah. Um. But just because the name Dracula X is on the Super Nintendo cartridge, now that is a hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Instead of being you know fifty cents, what it was. Be you know, when I was originally looking for it. Like, you know, I can get Earthbound for a hundred bucks or Chrono Trigger for a hundred bucks. Well, like, you, yeah. you can just get it on an emulator. But even even the actual well, physical ones. Have, like three remakes. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. that's what I, I have. Well, yeah, and it's like the Play PS1 versions where you have all the yeah. old Final Fantasies and everything. Yeah, that, that's that's the version of Chrono Trigger I still have. It has the, yeah. the videos in it, too, which is kind of yes. neat. I've got, oh, I was going to say, I have my, uh, my Game Boy. Has got that. The, the yeah, DS yeah. That's, that's, that's the yeah, one that's like got yeah. extra content. Yeah. Yeah. Like extra, extra, actual content. The monster raising stuff or the side dungeons? The side dungeons. Yes. I watched an amazing Let's Play. It was on the Something Awful forums. And it's nice, the, I did the forum ones because you get to follow along and actually participate on the thread as they do updates and everything as opposed to just watching it passively. Yeah. But this guy played through all of Chrono Trigger. He finishes the game Chrono is level one. He never levels up with Chrono in the entire game. And it isn't just, like, cheat it by having everybody else at 99. The highest level person is, like, 15, and the average level is, like, 10. It's amazing. Wow. It's, it's, like, super, it's super cool. Like, the big thing, once he gets the, um, the wallet that turns XP into money, then he just okay. plays the rest of the game, and then it's just a hard game. But before that, he has to do this weird juggle thing where he has to make sure two of his three people are dead at the end of every fight so that only one person gets the XP, and he has to juggle people in and out because people who aren't in your party get one-third of the XP passively, so if right. he leaves the same people out, they'll keep leveling up, so he has to juggle them in and kill them off. And then, like the individual fights, like the he has these techno these techniques worked down, like the Magus fight when you uh -huh. first fight him in his dungeon in his in his yeah basement. I remember that was a pretty brutal fight. It literally is like he goes through the combat cycle like th that he does his attack cycle like six times and it's just die resurrect die resurrect die resurrect die resurrect die resurrect die resurrect, die resurrect. and then the sixth time through there's just enough time that he can attack Magus once instead of resurrecting somebody and still have time to resurrect him and so he has to do this for like the fight was like four hours. Uh, and like if he I was can't a, see that being fun anymore, he's on active time mode too. So if he like hesitates for a quarter second on any of these cycles, yeah. it's just you're fucked. It was really interesting. Plus, the whole time in the thread, he had really great commentary about the game as well, and the game's a masterpiece. So. Right, like like that may have brought something up. Otherwise, what you just described is like getting your foot caught in a paper shredder and just slowly, slowly, slowly shredding your own leg. Yeah, well, except I'm watching somebody out. else's leg get shredded while they give me very interesting commentary about a masterpiece film they're watching. So it's like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know what, like, when you put it that way, I kind of like, like said, ah, and then Citizen Kane! He... It was a slid! Yeah. Like that, except <laughs> less <laughs> ear rapey. <laughs> it's really interesting. It was a little loud. It was a sexy ear. I couldn't help it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it the ear's fault? <laughs> no, that was on me. <laughs> rape free 2014. <laughs> no, because that wasn't about rape jokes. That was specifically about comparing losing a game to getting raped. So we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the bad person, and that's all right. Um, I don't know. I, I can't pick one game I'd want remade. Like, I, I, when you brought up, like, oh, there's so many. Because yeah. I'd like to, I don't want to see Ogre Battle remade, but I want to see more games that are built like Ogre Battle was. I want to see Parasite Eve remade, but they're gonna screw it up. Ah, uh, I want. There's another. Game. I tried replaying that game recently. She runs, I like snails are flying past her. Oh, that yeah. is the slowest protagonist I've ever seen in a game. Yeah, well, because it was they're they're basically taking the RPG ripoff of Resident Evil. Uh, is is what they do with with yeah. Parasite yeah. Eve. But the Resident Evil people, like, her running speed is the walking speed from Resident Evil. 
I'll have to replay. Oh my god, it's that, it's but. astoundingly slow. Because what I remember about the game is that, is that was one of the first games where I was like following the plot and going, "This is really cool science fiction." Yeah, like I really yeah. liked that. Second one, not as much, but the first one really locked down that 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 nice concept and it followed through. And the ending was kind of obscure, but it still did a lot of the right stuff. And you kill the evil demon baby on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Hudson Sound or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I, the final boss is like no, evil no, baby, it's, and it's a I brutal freaking that, fight. It's it a hard fight. fight. Evil baby shoots space lasers at you. I never got around to beating that baby because um, I was saving. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sound bite. Sorry, it's topical. Um, I was saving all my weapon upgrades for the new game plus, so my guns were all oh. crappy. And apparently, I had saved the game like after the point where the game's like you can only go forward to the boss fight. You can't go backwards to the upgrade your weapons bench anymore. Oh. So I was just like, oh, I get to lose forever now. <laughs> yeah, because that last boss fight is not easy. You've got some pretty limited resources for an RPG style title. I know, I, I know, I beat the game, but man, I I remember spending a lot of hours on Parasite Eve. I didn't. I don't think I played a lot of Parasite Eve two. It didn't but... have the same magic. Yeah. It was the story just seemed like, oh, how can we make more money off of the franchise? And they kind of forced it along. Yeah, yeah. I barely remember the plot. I remember mitochondria. Well, the, yeah. the, the plot to the second one, if I remember right, which could be right. wrong, is basically, like, they stopped the the, the mitochondria, like, insurrection in, in uh, New York, and then, like, other insurrections just started happening, so they built a task force to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, you know what, I, uh, you saved the city the first time, you can just do this some more. Mm. And then she just kind of blunders into this weird, like, midichlorian, like, ranch-style thing, where they're they're breeding the, the, the like monsters. ranch dressing? Yeah, almost. Okay. <laughs> so you can have midichlorian on your <laughs> yeah. on your sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not midichlorian. Mit mitochondria. Yeah. yeah. You might get some force. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, it means but it's the, they do Dumb. the same bloody things as the midichlorians end up doing. You want to shoot lasers? That's cool. Well, you're you're like, mitochondria. That yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is interesting that that's pseudo based. Uh, the yeah. very loosest, loosest term of the word that's based on actual science because our mitochondria is actually not native. Yeah. If you go back far enough. Like, yeah, 30 million years ago, mitochondria is just like, hey, can I be inside of you, Mr. Cell? And Cell's like, uh, what? And then, like, then we have cells energy, with mitochondria. You know? That's kind of neat that it's actually, it is a parasitic relationship that just has gone back for so long that it doesn't symbiotic. seem like it anymore. Well, yeah, symbiotic, yeah. I guess. Yeah, Because they, they're parasite. both getting something out of it. Well, what, what do parasitic, parasitic would be, it would be feeding right. off, of, off right. of it. Uh, it would be a symbiotic where they're both mutually benefiting each other. I wonder where the, in that gray it goes from one to another. Like, how helpful does the parasite have to be before you begrudgingly can claim it's symbiotic? Well, are they sleeping on the couch or are they doing chores? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> they, they don't pay rent, but they empty the dishwasher every once in a while. Like, is that parasitic or symbiotic? I would say the mind slugs from uh, Futurama are, are symbiotic. Because <laughs> they give you... <laughs> Ease of life. Yes. <laughs> like, there's no stress anymore. <laughs> and that's the definition of parasite, but but it's uh yeah, no, it's symbiotic. Yeah. After you have it on you, it's symbiotic. I like those friggin' crabs that those Arctic sharks have on their eyes. I haven't heard about those. Oh, it's it's exactly what I described. Oh, okay. Yeah, these crabs just, like, latch onto their eye with, like, one claw, and then they just, like, float around out the outside just, like, eating food and stuff, and it blinds the shark, and the sharks are just blind. I don't, it, it, but they're used to it. <laughs> like, for those sharks, because it's 100%. Like, every shark has one of those on both of its eyes. Like, there's no exception to the rule. So, for the sharks, getting your, your crab monster blinding is just like us hitting puberty. Like, eventually it happens, and then your life is different then. So, you hit Like, they just, they can crab. see, and then crabs eat their eyes, and now they're blind again. It's like a really terrible bar mitzvah. Caught that. <laughs> nah, it, I don't know, did, did you ever hear about the, uh, speaking of parasites, the, um, there's one that actually infects snails, and what it does is it, it, it like slowly eats their brain, and when it's kind of running out of snail brain to go for, it works its way into the snail's eyes, compels the snail to climb like a tall like stalk of grass or a stick, makes the eyes glow so that a bird will swoop down and eat at least the eyes. The uh, the eggs are in those eyes that incubate through the bird's digestive tract, and so the bird will crap out more parasites for snails. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a species of stuff that does that with ants too. Yeah. 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 Yep. But I don't think the ant one... That's, the ant one is a fungus. That, that's a fungus. The ant one's a fungus, and it's like... Because it goes up and it spreads its spore, and then the spore goes into different ants. Yep. The weird thing about the snail one is that the parasite is an adult, lives in a snail, but its eggs will only incubate in a bird. Mm -hmm. Like, the fuck? Yeah, how do you evolve that one? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> that, was, that was one of those like, you know what would be really cool? I don't really want our kids living in this neighborhood, so we're going to put them someplace nice. Yes. Yeah, Bird is like sending your kid off to military college <laughs> or something. <laughs> But I don't know which is more disbelievable, that evolution made this happen, or that some really fucked up god decided this was a good idea. I mean, it's the same thing we made the platypus. The odd, venomous, not quite mammal. But that's just mammal. the leftover parts, you know? Like, Shake it up. You, He's like, spit it up. Where's this part of the country? Uh, it's like Australia. It. Yeah. He just ran out of ideas when he got down to Australia. And started, that's when he got to the crazy stage. Like when he'd been up until like 2 in the morning and everything was funny. He had leftover beaver and duck parts. And he had a whole bucket full of venom he never got around to using. And he just threw it all at Australia. That explains a lot, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. So you went to an event this Saturday. I did. Last yes. Saturday. This past Saturday. Ha <laughs> So there was a spell draft event in Milwaukee this past weekend. Uh, we ended up having ten people there. While you're talking, everybody else is going to get to eat a Chad. You fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we ended up doing two five-person pools, which was kind of interesting, because then not all the cards got pulled in, which ended up hurting the one Hordes player of the ten of us, because then there were not nearly as many Animite. <laughs> but yeah, there were some interesting combinations. Uh, Harvey with uh, the High Reclaimers uh, Ashen Clouds, kind of annoying. Mm. Harvey with Starcrossed. Yeah, Harvey with Spannable Clouds. Yeah. Would be, yeah. Yeah, there's um, Harvey with Starcrossed. Uh, Haley mm. 2 with Starcrossed and I have Mana. Um, my personal. I, mean, I managed to pull off a Sevy 1 with Obliteration. I heard that every one of your victories was by obliterating a caster. Yes. Was that 100% true? Uh, with one caveat of the last guy I did to win the event, I also had to use an Arcane Bolt. Oh, okay. <laughs> because that one I couldn't shoot in the face of a Reckoner as well. <laughs> but, so, spoiler, you won. Yeah. But yeah, so POW 18 obliterations seems good. Especially when you have a caster that can strip all the focus off. Yeah, it was... I like all the original for your spell list for uh, Sevi is that you took Eye of Menoth. Oh, no, that was not actually... That actually got passed to me. <laughs> really? Yeah. What? I must have been some other really good spell on that list. Well, that's the thing, is all the packs for the cars are really good. Like, the very first one I got had um, Hellmound, Primed... Mouth? Yeah. No, Hellbound. You said Hellmound? And I don't know what a uh, Hellmound is. Yeah. <laughs> Hellbound. Google the, it. The <laughs> But Hellbound it's and the Antichrist Antichrist was and mobility <laughs> and what else was in there? It was really painful because I um, I had another uh, guy next to me who decided to counter meta the event. So instead of everyone else who brought squishy spellcasting casters, he brought Durgan with an Earthbreaker. Here's <laughs> bigger, yeah. <laughs> so and I'm sitting here going, all right, well I could kind of use this. So all right, I guess I'll give you this. And passing a mobile, uh, he got primed. He got. Uh, Hellbound, he got teleported. It was just really frustrating watching all these things go past. And I'm like, I would love to take these because you should never have them. I would just do a Merc list and throw uh, uh, Alexia 1 and Orin in there just to mm -hmm. say, fuck you people who came to cast spells. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing I took 71. It's like, oh, I feet and you don't get to cast spells. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> it only came up once because there was only once that I didn't feet to kill as well. <laughs> well, they didn't get to cast spells after they were dead. That's true. That's true. It's like one of my favorite responses. Somebody was asking because we were talking about Gatsby two being really good, and it's some like relatively new player, and it was when Keith still lived in Madison, and we were talking about how good it was, and the person's like, "Well, I don't understand his feet. Like, do they stay for the rest of the game?" And Keith goes, "Yes, yes, they do." <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, from a certain point of view, when he feeds, those things are there for the remainder of the game. <laughs> Usually, yes. <laughs> so quick. The three games I played, first one was against Assyria. I don't even remember what she had for spells. Uh, the guy playing him had terrible, terrible dice. Uh, he went up with 11 Mage Hunter Strike Force, and then Assyria cast two Sunder Spirits, and at the end of the day, I lost one Errant. That seems like fewer than you should have. Yes, it was. he missed with seven of the 11 Mage Hunters. He didn't even hit wow. Errant with no defensive buff on them. Uh, and then another three failed to need break like armor. Sixes? Sixes to hit, sevens to kill. Jesus. Six missed, three didn't break armor, I toughed one, then uh, Assyria killed one with a Sunder Spirit the second time it was cast. <laughs> so he then, was happy, I'm sure. Yeah, it was It was a very quick game. Um, 
Round two, I played against uh, Old Witch, um, which was kind of interesting because the person running him had just draft I mean, her had just drafted a ton of direct damage spells, so he had like Thunder Spirit and Spirit Fang and. He had, like, three or four different POW-12s. That and seems like a very bad idea. It was interesting. I mean, unless they each have a different utility. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you have Dead Weight, and then you also have, um, I guess, Thunder Spirit time and bomb. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Time Bomb. Like, Stranglehold well, was If really... I had Time Bomb, I would only take Time Bomb. Yeah, that's... You know, yeah, but, like, if you have the, the, you know, this one will let me focus, and this one will fuck over a beast. Like, yeah, well, Stranglehold was really annoying. I had yeah. uh, Blessing of Vengeance mm-hmm. Stranglehold twice, so that slowed me down a bit, but... Yeah. Um, just throwing a blood rage. Ooh, Stranglehold r- plus dead weight. Mm-hmm. Right? Because Stranglehold is a must forfeit. Yes. And yep. yeah. Stranglehold I, plus dead weight would I completely shut down a model every Dead weight is in the brick or not. Okay. Hmm. Might not be. Yeah, that one was just kind of going back and forth. I managed to early game get an obliteration off the blow most of the Winter Guard Death Star up, and then in the same turn also sent my Reckoner and shot Malakov in the face. Yeah. So that worked out, and then managed to oblit. Um, old witch hiding behind a wall, uh, and then the third game was against Haley Two. Uh, that was one of the Haley Two players with Starcross and Crossed. That's kind of frustrating. Starcross, okay, yeah, he had Starcross and mobility and boundless charge, so he had a Stormclad that could charge sixteen inches. Seems fair. Yeah. Mm. Although I managed that one, I got really lucky on because he moved up the stormcloud. I'm like, okay, Iris two, I'm gonna sacrifice you for one turn. Right. I'll disrupt you. Then the stormcaller missed. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, I and he feed it on me. I'm like, uh, Iris sex movement and does it again. And then I was able to counter feed. And then he, I made one mistake in that game and left the zone open. So he actually got up to three points. But he didn't quite seal off Haley behind Thorn correctly, so I managed to get Blessing of Vengeance over, and then Obliteration, and then a Arcane Bolt. It was the range 12, POW 11 one. So, range 12, POW 15 for me, but... Sure. Or 14. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. So that worked out... Well, the... I'm trying to think. The... The Durgan player was one of the other two. It was... The top three was me, the Durgan player, and then uh, the other Haley 2 player. Uh, the Durgan player ended up losing because of a... The other Haley 2 player in the event managed to get a, another uh, boosted uh, Stormwall up there and was able to actually Electro-Leap his entire support for the Earthbreaker mm-hmm. while killing the Earthbreaker with a stre- Strength of Granite Stormwall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, strength of Granite, more- I am men off uh, Signs of Importance Stormcall. Nice. nice. I'm excited by this. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. I was going to go, and then I didn't. Yeah. True story. Like I said, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> but it's definitely one of those events that I only want to play every so often, and it you have to be in the right mood for it, because, you know, there's just a lot of completely broken stuff. I mean, you have to approach it the same way as who's the boss. You can't go in there wanting to win. You want to, you just have to go in there and see how weird you can make it. I do have an I told you so about spell draft, because there's one thing that was too broken, and I'm like, guys, this is too broken. They're like, nah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then the only thing they changed like from last year to this year with spell draft was this one thing, which is the coven. Yeah. Because the coven's arcane conjunction, you know, normally you get minus one to all your spells. In spell draft lists, it's minus one to the first spell cast. For each of the... For coven. each of the three, as opposed to all okay. your spells. Well, they had to do that after three of the top four at lock and load were coven lists. One of which was spamming nine, nine bone shakers a turn. Which isn't even the broken one. Because I've heard that uh, Soulfire is in the it brick. Is. It's not in the no. brick anymore? Okay. Yeah, so I, they might have just... Co- pl- yeah. There's I think that one that's normally like a cost two, but if you kill somebody, you get that's a... That's Soulfire. Yeah. Soulfire. Soulfire's cost two, if you kill somebody, you get a focus back. So mm-hmm. at, at cost one, you can cast it infinitely. Assuming you kill something, which with focus nine, they're not going to miss. Right, and then... If and you infantry, even then... if they miss, then they just start the next one. They would have to miss nine times before they could... Nope, they'd have to miss eight times before they couldn't do it anymore. That could totally happen. Yeah, yeah, that's likely. Okay. Yeah, but it was actually... Ooh. And I think Soul Fire, if you kill something, this model gains a focus? No, it's the caster. Because if you Soul Fire sign with the Death Jack, the caster still gets the focus. That's what this yeah. model means. Mm-hmm. This model means yeah. the caster. Which So if they did have Soul Fire, so Death Jack could go up and Soul Fire two or more times just to give them extra focus for when they yep. activate. Mm-hmm. 
And then Scarlock does it once also. <laughs> yep. Crazy. Yeah. Somebody mentioned on the stream, though, that uh, they had a gator army with uh, with Coupe de Maine. Oh, yeah, that was one of the things. One of the other Harvey players, the guy with the clouds, also had uh, Ghost Walk Coupe de Maine Bastions going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that still only makes him a Speed 6 Pathfinder, which, you know, that's still slower than Satixis. It is, but when you have uh, 12 Burning Ash clouds out yeah. on the way in, that's valid. Yep. Yeah, it's about mentioned. Did you, were you the only one from Madison that went? Did uh, you even have Josh me, in your car? No, it was me and then John, Casey, and Brian. Oh, okay. So. Not Brian. Easy Brian. No. Brian, some other Brian. Josh is, uh, oh, that Brian. Yeah. The one from, yeah, Brian. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Who posted a very disturbing video of his tongue getting sliced in half on Facebook. No, no that's uh, Brian. That's a different Brian. Yeah. There's a third Brian? Mm hmm How many fucking Brians are there? Three. Three. What's the second Brian? That's John's friend? That, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember now. Well, John's friends with third Brian also. Yep. Uh -huh. Well, so come on. Saying that Brian is John's friend doesn't really <laughs> narrow it down, Jack and Apes. He's, he's the one that's usually hanging around I, with, with yes. John. I... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Well, well all right. All right. To, to clarify, to clarify. All right. Need so to... there's Brian. Uh-huh. Then there's John's friend, Brian. Sure. And then there's tattooed Brian. So neither that Brian nor the other Brian are friends with John? Because John plays board games with Brian I'm all the time. I'm trying to simplify it for you. Right. I thought they were friends. They are friends. I'm going to text Brian and let him know John doesn't think he's his friend. Okay. He's going to cry. We should get that in film. Quite possibly. Poor Brian. <laughs> Wait, which John? <laughs> we have two of those. <laughs> We only have two? That's not as many. We need more Johns. At one point in time, we had like four Nates, and three of them had the last initial H as well. So we couldn't even say, no, no, Nate H and Nate W, because that didn't work. We just had to stop distinguishing and just said, uh, any Nate's good enough here. In general, yeah, Nates actually, are good. We would not want the many <laughs> Nates around. The, the Nate <laughs> quality has dropped, though. Yeah. yeah. We got me. I'm, I'm okay. Epic Nate's gone. Yep. And uh, then, then we have Nate Newby. Like, no. 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 Yeah, no. our quality He's, controls yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah Nate Newby's never going to be on the podcast again. <laughs> God damn. I just, I loved how angry Travis was the next day listening to the podcast. Oh, he was so mad. <laughs> so, so mad. I'm going to have to listen to that one again now. No. Oh. No, you don't no. need to. Ah, newbie. Newbie. <laughs> it's never. Oh. Never. I've actually taken them off my contacts on my phone. <laughs> oh, wow. That's just me. No, I haven't. I um, <laughs> oh, sure you haven't. Wink, wink. Yes, he does it right now. For <laughs> anyone who is smart enough not to watch it, uh, a day before yesterday, uh, Jeremy did his live Legion stream. Yeah, we watched actually the first hour of it on the way back from Milwaukee. Uh, two, oh, sorry. Two hours and 45 minutes in, I show up. So, you know, I was watching at home, and he was getting drunker and drunker and being less and less useful as a human being. So I decided that it was going to descend into just people watching him literally just mumble and stare at the walls. So I, sh I drove over so I could just poke him and make him talk. <laughs> and I regretted it because then I was there just in time for him to talk about the Legion infantry. And every one of them was goddamn amazing. And every one of them was like, this is unplayable trash because it's not a beast. Yeah, it doesn't have Isle of Sight. I, I don't think Jeremy actually knows how to play Pathfinder. Pathfinder. This unit is... Uh, this unit is uh, Weapon Master with two attacks each and overtake and all that. No, they're, they're trash. They're no good. It's like, fuck off. Why the same person who came out with the, the Legion are pillow fisted? No, really, guys, they totally are. Well, that's because he doesn't feel the fucking Weapon Master units. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe charge somebody with a dozen Weapon Masters and see what happens. Works pretty well for most factions. Why yeah. the Legion? Because uh, they don't feel them. <laughs> oh, right. Well, you have to remember Jeremy's plan for Legion is just do whatever the hell Jake does. And Jake apparently cannot run infantry, so now Jeremy can't do that, because he just can't comprehend it. It also explains why he can't do anything with Red, because they have to field infantry. Like, read Raptors and tell me how many of your testicles you would give to have those in Trolls. You know, Swordsman, for the love of God. Oh, yeah. You know, just like, no, I can have those things. Ooh. He's like, they're unpoilable trash. Raptors? He said that about Raptors? Yes, yeah, they're, they're unusably bad. The, the, you know, the fast cab with because poison arrows and... Yeah, the, the thing is... They, they don't, they don't aren't have fearless. Sight. They aren't fearless. And, oh, yeah. 
So the so thing is, when is your speed 9, range 12, fast cav model, who are therefore at least 17 inches away from where the thing they just killed used to be, if they're taking command checks, how? Oh, how is he's playing them, and there's an, there is a uh, abomination too close. There's, did you there's fast cap forward? There was only yeah, one, one of his time. Own abominations, right? Yeah. There's only one time that just, that my raptors ever had to take a command check that wasn't involving loss of of unit. Yeah, and that was in Mark One. I accidentally put them too close to my to my abominations. And Mark One. I was the playing them against. Uh, must have been pre martial so must have been Matt Rassett. But I had my Scarlock thrall go up and throw a Hellfire. And Hellfire causes <laughs> command checks, yep, and they're yep. just like, gone, off the table. Yep. Well, the command's not exactly terrible, isn't it? It's like an 8? That's an 8 or a 9. Yeah, it's that's, 8, that's I think. pretty normal. It's 8, yeah. If that's your measuring bar of bad, it's unplayable trash. Mm, yeah. It's a very different definition Oh of my trash. god, I wanted to kill him. I wanted <laughs> to kill him so much. And, and I caught myself, because there was a delay on the feed, and so he'd say something... And then I'd look over at the feed, and ten seconds later, I could see my, myself rolling my <laughs> eyes and throwing my hands up the air like, oh my god, I've never seen someone so wrong in my life. <laughs> Travis is on the stream uh, uh, further uh, letting us know that he's still mad at uh, Newbie. <laughs> Newbie. I mean, so he, oh, it was great, because Travis was so mad. He's like, and every time I stop being mad, he opens his mouth, and more cancer just sprays out of that shithole. And so, like, the, the, the descriptors that Travis used were amazing. Given that he's normally our stoic Vulcan, you know, calm yeah. guy. Yeah, he's he's definitely our Spock. He only gets that mad. I've seen him that mad, and then when you troll him by bringing up Terminus shaking, those are the two times I see him get that angry. <laughs> I didn't troll him. You trolled him many times about that. You can say that time wasn't, but since then you've been like, "Hey, Travis, oh, shaky shake," and he's, he looks at you, and then he walks out of the room, and then he punches a puppy and breaks a car in half, <laughs> and then he comes back in, and he's Travis again. <laughs> so my new sport actually has been, you know, every time I see Travis, before I do that, I make sure I go through the ru rules form to find out what the most du I mean, stupid question of the week was, and then I ask him in person. For Travis? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> so there's been that. So it's been the food machine question, and uh, what are the good ones? You should ask I was really one. sad because there wasn't anything for this past week. There's one. I was going to scroll back and find it. I forget what it was, but I um I messaged him on, on Messenger. I was like, hey, Travis, can you tell me exactly how Warbeast packs interact with theme forces? And he responded with, eat a dick. <laughs> 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 that's, his, that's his official infernal ruling. Just eat a dick. <laughs> oh, so he'd be, he'd be perfect with Jeremy in his legion. Yeah. Because <laughs> then he could just eat a whole bag. Yeah. For, for anyone who hasn't watched that feed yet, Andy has the audio you said. It's, it's pretty much up. It'll be out sometime soon. You've done 90% of the It should work. be up fairly soon, yes. Like, you've done everything. It's up to itself when it gets through almost to this point. <laughs> well, so, 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 it'll be up soon. Oh, yeah, you were going to tell your YouTube story. But before you go into the details of that, if you watch it or listen to it, take a shot anytime uh, Jeremy says bag of dicks. And I then don't want to notify your next of kin before doing this. <laughs> wow. That's he says bag of dicks at least a hundred times. That's, Minimum. That's, that's many, many bags of dick. Yeah. Because um, yeah. he was so drunk by the end, he thought it was a wacky catchphrase, so he was saying it ten times per entry, basically. He was uh, being exactly. so goddamn. It, it was painful to go through any type of topic on there. I showed up for like maybe a half hour of it, and it, he kept on going. I was like, hey, yeah. so this thing's got a power 18x. Do you know what that means, Andy? I'm like, no, Jeremy, what does that mean? That means I get blah, 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 blah. I just, oh, I just, good old Jeremy. So smug of everything. <laughs> the drunker he got, the more self-assured he got, and the more wrong he was, which was a great combination. Yes, he was very wrong the whole time. <laughs> so like, yeah. what happens when the butcher runs up forward, sitting on full camp, and you walk up the forsaken up to it? <laughs> the, the best thing at the end I was just trolling him and the thread got on board we were just talking about how amazing Proteus is and he kept coming with great Proteus tech legit great Proteus tech it was astounding by the end like uh, Willith 1 and Proteus BFFs by the way uh, we, uh, that Proteus is the best Dark Sentinel because he's like well I have Typhoon Veil you mean or Veil, Veil, sorry, yeah. not Lilith. Veil, Veil, Veil 1. Proteus actually is decent with Lilith 1 as well. Lilith 1 as well. Mm -hmm. But with Veil 1, he's like Dark Sentinel, because he's like, I have Typhon go up, and 
hope for the crit pitch to get them out of melee with Veil. Vale. Just like grab Proteus drag. can drag them, yeah. and I didn't even mention the time, but Proteus can drag them, and then if he if he does it with his ranged version, that'll be boosted, and then that grants an additional melee attack that'll also be boosted yep. because Dark Sentinel allows. So you could double yeah. boost Dark Sentinel with Veil. Vale. Yeah, Good times, and and she has Rampager. Oh yeah. So we're saying you can rampage or something up at speed, and then Proteus can drag it another six inches. So you can get yeah. about like a foot forward, Proteus yeah. for life. Yeah, yank it right out of control. Oh, yeah. This would be still alive. Proteus yeah. with Rias is great because on her feet turn, one of the inf the issues is that things can jump out of her command range. He has hurting. Oh. Oh yeah, Proteus baby. Yeah, no, I I've always liked Proteus. I, I just never got him because I didn't play Legion. <laughs> Well, they're, they're, it digress a little bit, but a lot of problems that Legion players have is if it's not super duper easy to use and ignores all the opponent's rules, it's by default bad. So, <laughs> all their infantry. Well, yeah. that's what he did every time. He's like, they don't have Pathfinder in Vile of Sight, therefore they're unplayable. That was literally his logic for, like, all of his infantry. Oh my god, how does Menoth play? Yeah. Very yeah. well. <laughs> but, but, but all their infantry doesn't have Pathfinder. Actually, the fucking errants do. Well, the errands do. Yes. So the, so we mean seven, seven rat six pathfinder. Fuck you. Five pathfinder points. Pathfinder blast advanced deploy with their sack thing and their five fucking eight. Yep. God, yeah. I hate that unit. Yes. Well, yeah, no, no, they're, they're more because they have the UA with them. Yeah. Okay, the so Rupert UA that makes them tough and fearless. Also. <laughs> yeah, and the Rupert <laughs> UA. Yes. So they're yeah, twelve I just points. Spend fourteen points on them before they get really stupid. Yeah, but at eight points, they're still retardedly good. Oh yeah, because you have the yeah. Yeah. with them too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking, fucking, fuck, fuckity Protector. fuck. But it, uh, <laughs> God. We'll just have to show them up with other faction podcasts. That, that can that can show even worse. Well, what I was going to do, and we made this pledge on the podcast, but I think he was relatively drunk, and I actually, I don't want to do it because I think that I'm right, and I don't want to dream stomp him, uh -huh, but um, I told him <laughs> what no, I was going to do. do but you should do it. <laughs> do it. I don't even know what it is, but do it. No, I, I know. It was, the, it was the challenge. My challenge for him was that he... He can run Legion how he wants to run Legion. I would play like Rias and Kalis, infantry heavy Legion. I would spend at most 10 points in beasts, not counting my beast points. So 40 points of my list would be infantry, and I would do better than him at the six pack. <laughs> that was that was my bet. <laughs> the issue is I'd rather just play my minions or convergence and win the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and and this worst case scenario, one of two things happens. Either I win and I crush poor Jeremy's spirits. And there's a point where that's not funny anymore. <laughs> or I lose, and I wasted the six-pack failing at an attempt to troll Jeremy. And neither of those are me winning the whole thing with pigs. Yeah, but... but I don't know. <laughs> Jeremy Broken Spirits sounds pretty It is fun. so beautiful of a concept, though. <laughs> All I know is I want to... After War Machine Weekend, I'm going to start testing out the Mad Dogs of Everblight. Fucking List. rear guard, man. Oh, that Come theme on. force. Thanks to a shredder. A uh, blightedness uh, sorceress and eleven beast packs. Oh yeah, <laughs> tier two. All of them, all the beast packs get advanced deploy. I get plus one to go first. <laughs> it's Jordan. I like this at all. It's Jordan's Doom Reader list with eight more models that are speed seven with Pathfinder and can boost. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and have size importance. Yes. Nice. I don't like that at all. Anything interesting <laughs> over there? I was just gonna say Tort had mentioned. Uh, fairly sure that you heard Jeremy. Uh, that errants are unplayable trash and, and can eat a bag of dicks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Insert word here is unplayable trash and can eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. Unless it's a Legion beast. Yeah. I, it, unless it has what? Isle of Sight. And Pathfinder. And Pathfinder. Then it just... It Which means that dicks. Drudge Mind Slaves with Ghost Walk are the best thing ever. Yeah. But according to Jeremy, they probably still are unplayable trash. No, they have Isle of Sight and Ghost Walk then. Yeah. And uh, Pathfinder then. That means I don't care that, that is legit scary. Yeah. I can't uh -huh. get Ghost Walk with them. Can yeah, I? Can. With Denny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never mind. They are Never a Crix <laughs> unit, Andy. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. People yeah. won't admit that they are. Denny's theme force. Here, why don't you tell your anecdote about the stream being uploaded on YouTube while the other three of us eat some Tim Tams? What? I have to what? I'm Troll Jeff and I endorse this idea. Go. I want Tim Tams. Well, then tell your anecdote. My anecdote, but what? I was looking at uploading the YouTube things. Oh, and well, how they were in Arabic. When you stuff. finish, you too can have a Tim Tam. All right. Excuse you, what does it say right here? Irresistible know. chocolate biscuit. You have to try a Tim Tam. Fuck that, I'm not going to conform to some Australian bullshit. I mean, a Tim Tam. Yeah. I so, can't resist. So, interesting story about uh, 
when I uploaded Jeremy's wonderful thing to YouTube. I did the podcast 91, uploaded it, worked just fine. Uploaded Jeremy's. It took the eight-hour broadcast and chopped it up into five different parts and then put them up. And actually, it chopped it up into five different parts and only put three of them up. I'm like, oh, okay. So I started running it again. It chopped it up thinking that maybe it'll do it all at once and chopped it up in five different parts again and messed it up. There was, when it then posted it, it posted it into its own playlist, which then posted to our YouTube cha or uh, uh, Facebook channel in Arabic, <laughs> and I think Swedish. I'm going to interrupt yeah, you for a second because it's an emergency. We need some freaking milk for these things. This would be wonderful. There's no milk. What the... I don't believe in milk. The cream in the middle of this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Like it isn't just like a solid like chocolate like wed uh, layer or something like it's 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 good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to do a Tim Tam Slam. Yes. He said, which we, we I think that'd be a little sloppy and noisy on the air. But apparently, Tim Tam Slam is when you bite off either end and then you suck the milk through it. Yeah, we can put that in the air. Just cut out the audio and for something to terribly inappropriate. You can't do I, that when you're live. I think <laughs> the cream is thin enough uh, that that it would just like turn into chocolate milk as it goes through it. Because yeah. Of the, yeah. Oh. The, 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 your, your problem there describing about doing something live <laughs> reminds me of one oh, of my yeah, favorite. Can, we can still have that. Oh, are you talking about grapefruiting? No. Because listen to audio of that. Oh, that, 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 that is amazing. <laughs> that video is great. And when she goes, <laughs> it's like I heard somebody describe it as a wet garbage disposal <laughs> giving a blowjob. The first time that clip was ever introduced to me, someone just started it and just put his phone down, like <laughs> the image down. Like, I just following. Okay, I guess I'm following onto the point. And. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I read a follow-up article by somebody else, some some uh, female blogger, who tried it out and said, it actually works. <laughs> like, <laughs> creepy sound effect original video aside, it actually worked. And she's like, the original video said to surprise your man with it, she wasn't going to do that, so she <laughs> told her boyfriend right up front, I'm going to put a grapefruit on your dick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this situation is like one of those Hallmark gift cards you open up and you're like, yeah, what is it? Gonna put a fruit in your dick. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> what I was talking about is uh, my favorite moment of live broadcast involved the late great Owen Hart. I don't know if you saw this at all, Nathan. Mm -mm. No, no. It was uh, Owen Hart. He he was he was unmasked as the Blue Blazer live on television. Which he then, he then, in the next day, or basically claimed that it was like a stunt double. It was, it was put in there in post. It was like, oh, and that was live. It was like, no, 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 no. That wasn't me. That wasn't me at all. You could tell that the, the hair is different. It's just the vehement deniability of, of wrestling. They did it Android. in post, but they did it in post live, you see. <laughs> no, you can't do it in post There was a guy live. in the, in the booth, and he was no. just like, yeah, he did it. No, you can do it in post and you can do it live. No. And then you zoom and enhance. Yeah. I've seen CSI. Yeah, you can't do that live. Just get enough, you know, Asians in the room and they can figure <laughs> it out. Unless it's how to drive. Okay. No no number of Asians can figure that out. That doesn't matter. Have you ever seen the Drawn Together episode where they fixed that problem? You know, to go to if we just want to keep going with the racist route right away. <laughs> was that that's not the same one where they had the princess put on the goggles that made her see life like an Asian person? No, that's the same oh, one. Oh, okay. Oh, it's great. <laughs> put on the goggles to make her see it like an Asian person. They hold up so they show up like a a picture of I forget what the first one is, but then she holds up the a second one. It's like a picture of dog. And she's like, I see dinner, and then they hold up a picture of two identical like Asian stereotypes. It's literally just the same picture twice, and she says, I see two completely different gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, I think they continue on with that too, where they show oh, yeah. like a picture of like an intersection and she freaks out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh, that show it had its genius moments. Like, yeah, it, it did. Like it sometimes it went, sometimes it went too far, and things could be like, oh, that's not funny, and you're really pushing it too hard, and that scene is bad. But ninety percent of that show was shockingly good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like like when Captain Hero lost his powers. Yeah. He was confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> 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 That's so wrong. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic was the word you were looking for. Yeah. True. Fantastic. What were we talking about? Your, your videos were in Arabic. Oh, yeah, my videos are in Arabic. So um, the funny thing is, I saw those go up, and I thought that was purpose. I mean, you know, it's, just, it's like, oh, okay, so I get it. It was Swedish Muslim Jeremy by the end. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, and, know, then, I, 
you posted about this Twitch stream, like, you know, an hour ago for people yeah. to Deputy Grumbles, and it, it had uh, Legion chat, like, under the icon still, because apparently that was, like, the name of the Twitch stream still, or whatever. Oh, yeah, possibly. We talked about Legion. It happened. We did. We talked about it better than Jeremy did. It only took five minutes. <laughs> that is goddamn true. <laughs> Andy made the mistake of giving me a hammer just randomly, like, Ooh. a half hour after I sat down. I don't know why. I was like, here, the hammer. And man, did I almost I, use that. I was, I was hoping. I was hoping. I was ready with the bleach. <laughs> Everybody in chat said they wouldn't turn me in. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, it was astounding. Like, sometimes I wish we lived in Looney Tunes land where I can just hit somebody with a fucking frying pan and they won't die. Yeah. <laughs> I, th that would be, that, yes. Especially with Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> so frustrating. Uh, it's like, uh, one small thing is like, we've always met generally on Sunday at 6 o'clock. And, I, I kid you not, we've been doing this for two years now. Wait, isn't it at 6.15? Because that's when I show up. <laughs> well, no, that's still six you got your here. you got your yeah. daytime. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jeremy would, would they've go. Been, they've been dialing your clocks. He would, he would consistently ask me, "He's like, hey, are you guys uh, are we podcasting this this Sunday?" I'm like, yes. What time? I'm like, six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Every week it was. But that. now it's Mondays at six thirty. Yeah, Mondays. We're probably gonna go with that for a while. Yeah. They had some folks decide that they don't take a hiatus for a little bit. Ish, maybe, maybe, well, whatever. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll figure it out. Ah, uh, whatever. What was that thing you're talking? Are you done right, with the video thing? Basically, right. the, the, other, the other crazy thing though too is also the audio ended up breaking, so I had to pull the audio from the live stream as well. Are you glad you took a Tim Tam, Dan? It was better than I expected. Yeah, you you yeah, earned a Tim Tam, Tam, Andy. All right. You've earned a Tim... Oh, oh, I didn't pull it No, you're an A Tim Tam. That's right. I planned ahead. There may or may not have been two Tim Tams in the shipment, and I only brought one package in for you assholes. <laughs> oh, son of a turd witcher. <laughs> uh, I think we can we can try to find ways of improving the Tim Tam Slam uh, methodology. Like, like... Bailey's? Ooh. 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 You were onto something. You have another package of these, right? We got our next podcast planned out. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> the alcoholic Tim Tam Slam. All right. Do we have Zappity Grumble questions? <laughs> no. None? No. I, I, look, I, I looked at it like three times now. You didn't tweet it. I did. You tweeted? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I tweeted it. Recording and broadcasting episode 92 tonight. Around 6.30. Zappity Grumble. Yeah, like we have one Twitch. person on Facebook telling us that we're late. <laughs> Does that count? What's happening? Grumble. Grumble. <laughs> yeah, we're late. Deal with it. All right, we could try pulling it from chat. It looks like, but yeah, there's there's none there, none on Twitter. All right, if you're watching, start putting up questions. We'll do it live. Yeah. We're going O'Brien here, not O'Brien, O'Neill, O'Reilly, O'Reilly. That's who it was. Yeah, it's Bill O'Reilly. Bob O'Reilly. <laughs> what? Bob O'Reilly. That song. That's that fucking Who song with the crappy keyboard thing at the beginning that... Uh, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you and your Who hate. That's Bob O'Reilly. <laughs> Which is the goofiest name ever to a song. It is. It is. It's a song that everybody knows it by something else. Yeah. It's, it's like the Pina Teenage Colada Wasteland. Song. They call it Teenage Wasteland yeah. sometimes or whatever. Yeah, Pina Colada. Fuck you, Pina Colada song. Hey, if oh, you like them. When that started playing at Guardians of the Galaxy, Raylene just started poking at me and laughing. Because <laughs> she trolls me with that goddamn song. So often, well, it's I it's fucking a, hate that. It's song. amazingly catchy. It's it's got a horrible lesson behind it, but it's amazingly <sighs> catchy. God damn that song! Didn't say supported ah. it. Let's repair our marriage by both having sex with random people. See, now you're talking sense. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds perfectly fine for uh. a <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my lord! Somebody should take those away from me now. Yeah, yeah. Get, Jeff, get the Tim Tams. <laughs> no, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do we have questions yet? This is your job. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the. I'm eating. <laughs> vamp. <laughs> you, you, you know, what? Who's not eating? Dan, vamp for us. Oh, actually, I do have something that I could say. Okay. So, are you excited for the road trip for War Machine weekend? Oh God. Yep. Or are you out doing Brian? Yep. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> son of a bitch! I made a terrible mistake. 
<laughs> the best part of it was a few weeks ago, Josh was over at my house, and he was just like, so, are we going to make a bad mix for Nathan? And I'm like, I'm already done with it. Hey, do you know how you uh, bookend that uh, mixtape? Aren't the pina coladas with, with, with escape? <laughs> no, I'll just get that one as a low point on the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. I do to bring Nathan back to life after the horrors. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fucking pina colada song. All right, so we do have a couple questions here, so fuck I'm gonna you. go ahead. Oh, oh speaking of, you're gonna say right. fuck you to the guy that's yeah, wrote fuck you, guy. Here. This Tim Tam's melting quickly. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is a flaw. Uh, there, the what's his face who got the job at ACD and is moving to Madison? Mm -hmm. I oh. told him to talk to you about uh, War Machine Weekend because since he doesn't live where he lived, he doesn't have a car ride anymore. And I know you had mentioned that hypothetically, uh, I don't know if you can fit a person in your passenger seat if you're 100 percent full. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm taking so my 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 shopping list for War Machine Weekend involves all the podcast equipment. All of my video equipment for the painting lounge, which includes a, a television, all my all the stuff for who's the boss, the wheel and that, and the majority of the casters as well. So maybe I I I don't know. I I barely will have enough room for myself in the car. The TV is the big thing, but that, I, I wanted to have a TV there so when we're given the classes, we could have a video camera that would be feeding into the television so people who are not right next to the person uh, teaching can see it on the television. And, Makes sense. And since it's a painting lounge, I thought it would be kind of cool to ha throw up movies or something like that during, you know, just during paintings for background music, right. for, for background noise, like throw up like Lord of the Rings or some other schmancy thing like that. If you can somehow, I'm just saying, if you can somehow find a place to wedge him in, you get to be less bored and ha spend half as much on gas. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him on Wednesday. It's probably doable. I mean, I assume it's probably not a ton of stuff, and I'm sure we could probably fit an army and bed and clothes. It should be good. All right, All right. now you should have some zappity grumbles. Oh, my God. It, it, well, it's already scrolled up now. Oh. Excellent. So, what are you looking forward to the most in 2015 for War Machine Hordes? I would say, isn't uh, the new, isn't uh, Hordes anniversary next year? I think it might be. My my current thing I'm most excited about, um, <laughs> trans in hmm? your uh, your battle engine for your conversion. That's not coming out next year. That's <laughs> never coming out. <laughs> Um, but every pig model that's not out yet, I mean, apart from the releases that I only know about, but, um, Steamroller 2015 beta is currently out. <laughs> yes, yes it is. And that is 2015. Hey, I'm excited. Talk to your local press ganger. It's really interesting. That's what oh. I'm excited about. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I really want to get my hands on some highwaymen and, uh, their, their UA, so to speak, that I can never remember her name of. Oh, Braylon. 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 There we go. Yes. I really want those because I think that they're fantastic. They're going to do terrible things with punch the table who aren't expecting them. Yep. I'm looking forward to Reckoning. Reckoning? Yep. It's... I will probably have zero models in that book. So <laughs> that's the unfortunate thing about playing Convergence is I can't look forward to War Machine books. Yeah. Wow. Well, mine, mine was Hordes. I, if, if it is next year is the anniversary of Hordes, it would be very cool because... You know, we got Cephalix and yeah, I can't remember if it's fifteen or sixteen is the ten year. So. Yeah, I can't. I cannot remember either. But I maybe maybe it is two thousand six. Might be. Yeah. Who knows? Zappity Grumble. You can't say both. Yeah, I can. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, how is Exelon Sexless coming along? I uh, he's he's uh being cleaned. He's almost primed. Almost primed. He's being clean though. That's the big thing. His uh his base that he's on is is uh is a cork base, so I have to make sure it's cleaned and so it doesn't just flake off when I prime it. And I know Andy. We have not yet reached Andy time. Uh, yeah, because Andy you're time leaving next Thursday. Um, possibly Wednesday. So this went Thursday, possibly Wednesday. Andy will start painting him. Yeah, Andy needs a solid week of panic to properly paint a model. Yeah, I also have to assemble models too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, I've got Borka two, the Iron Mother. Oh, Borka two. Sorry, that reminded me. Go on. 
and some other models. Okay, so on the Something Awful forums, uh, in the mm -hmm. War Machine Hordes thread, they were talking about Borka 2 recently, and about how he's shockingly better in play than he is on paper, which I know you've said. And somebody was like, yeah, like, people were bad-mouthing him on, like, Crippled System and Road to War and, and Chain Attack or whatever, but I didn't listen to him. I don't remember us bad-mouthing Borka 2. No, we, I, I was very we, hesitant to endorse him, but we yeah. we tend to... I don't think we really badmouth anything but the Freebooter. Well, that's because it's terrible. Yeah, it's unplayable. <laughs> Unplayably bad. It is terrible. <laughs> it could be yeah. He's attack. cavalry, so he's got plus two mat on his charge, yep. too, which mat is super sexy. on that charge attack. No, I, I, was, I was playing a game, and someone lingered a little too close, and, and Borka ran straight into the Carnivian, who was just going to assault him and spray, into, spray over him, and Borka ran straight into that mess clocked him, ripped off its mind aspect, and took the spray, was fine, took a one hit, lost some hit points, froze the Carnivian, and went, yeah, what you got now? Bring it, bitch. How do you yeah. take the spray if he was in melee with it? It was the assault spray. It can't assault you if you're in melee with it. Yeah. No, no, it, it assaulted, it's not expecting to reach me. I thought you said you you uh, you charged it. He countercharged. It was a countercharge, sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, it was a countercharge. Gotcha. That, that was the highlight of the story. It was on the opponent's turn. Oh, but you could... You shouldn't have even gotten sprayed then if you were. I wanted you to be But you could go off to the side a little because the spray is so narrow; it only comes out of the center of the front arc. You could impact attack him like. But doesn't always at ten o'clock. But he ends his movement. You could place a spray. Does he turn to directly face? Oh yeah, the spray, the spray would. The spray doesn't that. come straight forward. So I, I, the I spray would go to the side. Yeah, 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 yeah he would aim that. But I really wanted to be able to. Because on that round, I was able but to... But you could redirect his spray by charging right. him in a different chunk of his front arc. But I was, I was willing to take the spray, because by doing so, I got also got an impact attack on the nearby Frozen Angelus. Mm. So, that turn, I was able to generate four attacks in a single counter charge. I mean, Sexy one of them was times. only a power 12 bomb, so... I mean, oh, is that all? I know, it was sad. <laughs> That's, That's how I saw Vexits is coming along. Yep, is that pretty terrible? Uh, who's going to take the, who's going to do the circle faction stream? Who knows? We could have Newbie do it. <laughs> no! Fuck it! <laughs> what? Well, you don't have to be in the same room when he We don't it. have to be there when he does it. Oh my god. him in the room? Yeah. So I have a, like, a four-hour static loop that we can put on, which will get better ratings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and be less <laughs> offensive. <laughs> Overdub it with some yakety sacks and just be done with it. I would rather just do it, and I don't know anything about Circle. I would just go through <laughs> model by model and go like, oh, this seems neat. I don't know anything about it, and I would just theory machine for eight hours. We That would actually be kind of fun. I, yeah. I honestly think that we could probably get Katie to do it. We would have to have support there for her. Yeah. We would probably have a, at least a couple Circle players. It might well, be able to keep the trend with putting enough booze there. You just have a couple of oh, models laid out. Oh, drunk Katie on the podcast. She gets a vodka for every X number of models she gets through. <laughs> Katie loves her vodka. She does. That's we'll we'll, we'll work on it. She's been yeah. she's out of town for the next couple of weeks, so we might be able to get a guest to do it. I mean, we've got yeah. Milwaukee people we know, like um um Dan, Dan, yeah, Dan could come over and do it. He's good. Yeah, but he has to come over here. I mean, it'd be ten minutes long. He'd just say Cromac and two stalkers is good, and then he'd leave. Yeah. No, we want everything talked about. Everything. If we're gonna do it, we gotta yeah. do it right. Yeah, we'll find somebody. And that leads to oh, Zeppity. Rumble. What conventions are you, in the next year, are you excited to go to, and why? Adepticon, Kill and Girl, or Machine Weekend. I haven't, I haven't done, done Kill, Kill and Girl. Girl. So that's the one the Hacksaw does in July. This year he's doing it as a full five-man WTC teams. Oh, interesting. That would be kind of fun. I'm excited about Adepticon also. I need to... Currently, Travis is tentatively my partner for the team tournament, but he usually ends up running something, so I might have to find a fill-in. And I know you know what the duo is going to be. I'm in. Okay. Neither of us play the two factions we're going to be doing, but we'll figure it out, because goddamn is this list good enough that you don't need to know what Anything you're doing. Anything that you and John proved that no skill is required to get close. Those were at least our factions. <laughs> you, is no, it was one of your factions, and it was John. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I play Convergence. Yes, with, that's what I mean. He yeah. played Sir. Doesn't he? What? I don't even remember what he was playing. Not off, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's that was his fact. He was playing three fourths of the table. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> God, I'm so excited about that team tournament combo. We got this shit, Dan. Yep. Is there anything that I can lend you to it? 
Uh, Actually, I think I own all the models we need. Okay. Okay, Zappity. Well, I, actually, I'm I'm looking forward to lock and load again. Uh, I wouldn't. I like uh, Depticon and uh, War Machine Weekend next year. I next year I'm hoping to go a lot more conventions, especially since I just got a big promotion at work. Uh, yeah. That like, it, yeah, it's very nice. Like the percentage that my income went up was very satisfactory because I was like poverty line income, and now I'm like a human being can live on this money income, and so I'm exceed extremely happy about that. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping, I always was hoping to go to more conventions this next year, but now it's actually feasible. So I wanted to do, I mean, obviously Adepticon War Machine Weekend I do every year, but if I could go to a lock and load or a, um, uh, the other one, uh, you know, the thing, what's Temple the other Con? one? TempleCon, maybe, yeah. There's the one, the lock and load is the one up in Seattle. What's the one up in the, the eastern area? Temple, that, Temple that's Con. TempleCon, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's or Daikon, though. Daikon's another one. Daikon, is, well, yeah. Daikon's and Gen Con. Like, of those four, I'd hope to go to two of yeah. them. I didn't I didn't mention Gen Con because I'm going to be there anyway. It's just yeah. Gen Con. You know. Yeah. So Adepticon, Gen Con, and War Machine Weekend, and then maybe lock and load would be great. I guess probably a better subject would have been which convention are you looking forward to going to, but you haven't. Lock been, and load. To and be, been to it before. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been to a, I haven't been to lock and load. Yep. Be cool. Mm -hmm. You don't do conventions. No, not really. No. You can come to Gen Con. You, you should come with us sometime. Just uh, you don't have to work the thing out. You can just yeah. You, you have to you have to sell it big. Okay. I I, I I'm not a big fan of most <laughs> of humanity. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of humanity either. But I get by. <laughs> True. Yeah. Zabby, yeah. grumble. All right, um, do we have a podcast uh, Fuck Up Palooza planned yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're it's recording happening. it. Yeah, we have the time set down. I've got verification from Road to War and Muse and Miami, and I think uh, a couple other. Like, we've got verification from several podcasts that they will be there at that it's that date and time. Yep. We were going to record it Friday after the first round of the Invitational. So, like, the first round of the Invitational is at 8, so we're going to yeah. record at, like, 10-ish. Now I just need to figure out where we're going to record. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 find find we'll find something. Thing. We'll find some place. But it's happening. Yep. Zavity. Grumble. Uh, when is Andy going to do a solo cast on Mercs? Um, uh, right after my troll cast. We, we have to plan that. I think yeah. we, we're planning that for after War Machine Weekend. Yeah, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. I used to play trolls. Used to. I used, used to play, play Well, you could, you could, uh... I can yeah. help the Merc cast. Yeah. People like you. Fools! <laughs> <laughs> Zappity. Zappity. Um... Oh. Grumble. <laughs> yeah, double lightning. <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> what? What do you guys think about the Avengers 2 trailer? I haven't watched it yet. It... It looks exciting. People are speaking like it's the second coming. I don't uh, know if it's that good, but I am excited about the movie. I'm know. excited. I've stopped watching the Marvel movies in that series. Really? I don't care anymore. Really? Oh. Mm -hmm. huh. This is one of those things... That I thought I was dead inside. Well, <laughs> this is one of the things where I have some friends who took, like, fanboyism and fangirlism so far that it's actually deadened me to interest to it because no. they were so obsessed over it oh. that I just don't want anything to do with it anymore. It's become, like, a responsibility versus an enjoyable diversion. Yeah, well, well like I said, they're... They've just taken it so far in the extreme of wanting, you know, to cosplay up of it all the time and stuff like that. I just, yeah. I now have an aversion to that whole line. Also, I didn't like Winter Soldier. True story. I haven't seen it yet. Everybody thinks I'm crazy when I say that. I didn't particularly like it. I, 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 I really didn't like Iron Man 3. That was the weakest did. Iron Man. Oh, absolutely. It was the weakest, but it was still a better than, like, Spider-Man 3. Oh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I mean, he was the kid was a great reaction, and, but, and I did I, like Iron Man three better than the newer, than the Amazing Spider Man. Oh my well, god! Yeah, both of those are terrible. Oh, I've seen the second one bad. Oh, the second one's so bad. Oh, Andy and I said, did we see both of them together? Yeah, no, we made the purpose. Yeah. We're gonna go see the third one too together. Oh my fucking god! It was it was it was painful enough to see the first one twice, the first fifteen twenty minutes of it twice, yeah. um, and then the second one was just oh, just everything about that movie was just so horrible. I mean, you have Paul Giamatti, who's an amazing actor, and he's playing a fucking buffoon. Yeah. It just... Uh, so painful. It was not good. It was not good at all. Uh, yeah, that's true. Where are we? But, but I am interested in the in the new Avengers trailer. I think it's... I it, it see someone cool. post that. At this point, all I care about is more Guardians of the Galaxies. The fact, the fact that, uh, that James Spader does the voice of Ultron 
lends itself yeah. very well. That was in a that big trailer. surprise to me. It was like I, I could say you hear the voiceover. I'm like, is that all? Is that, could they have oh. done that for Ultron? Well, I knew the I knew that they had him for for oh, for I Ultron already, but it. but just hearing him talk, yeah. just just it just did it well. I think did you just get a boner over there? You just no, I just. I was purposely trying to misunderstand you, and so, like, I can do that. Like, I can purposely have something be wrong in my head. So, I'm it, it, between my ears and my brain, I converted James Spader into Christian Slater, and that would be the greatest Ultron. <laughs> uh, I want Christian Slater as Ultron now. <laughs> no, I want Christian Slater as Voltron. Voltron, yeah. So, as, as uh, no, as Pidge. <laughs> Spader, Ultron versus Slater, Voltron. The battle to rattle. No. Zabity. Rubble. Oh, here we go. I found it. So, apparently the uh, Age of Ultron uh, trailer syncs up perfectly from with uh, My Heart Goes On from Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Gotta see that. Uh, did any of you see the AMA with Keanu Reeves and how sad he doesn't get calls to be in movies anymore? What? Yeah. He doesn't get calls to be in movies? Not very often, apparently. They might think he's just too expensive. I, I don't know. I, I, obviously, there, there's an AMA well, that he talked about he's, it. But he's had a couple solid runs, but a lot of his acting is a little wooden. Like, he doesn't portray a lot of personality a lot of the time, you know? Well, he's angry if you kill his... Yes, that's, uh, that is fair. And I mean, like, like, one of his best roles ever was still Bill and Ted, you know? He played Bill and Ted? Yes. What did Alex Winters do? Not much. <laughs> that is, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the general summary of his career. Yeah. What am I going to do? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> There's an Onion article where it's like Alex Winters keeps calling up Keanu Reeves with great Bill and Ted three ideas. <laughs> I think terrifying because aren't they actually working on a Bill and Ted? I believe three? they are. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I think the problem with with well, again, he probably answered in there. I think he tried really, really, almost too hard to reach out to. Show how expansive he can be in his acting. Well, I've heard good things about and his newest movie. Um, John Wick it was yeah. an action flick, and you know, yeah. Well, like, and the one clip I saw is more expression I've seen in Keanu Reeves than in a long time. Yeah, I mean, like, I re I remember one of the first time I saw him in, and I it was kind of cool because I didn't actually tell you he was in it until weeks after the trailers were out. Is The Watcher? Yeah, he was he was the villain in that. And yeah, he was actually spoilers. Pretty pretty fucking creepy. Yeah. Well, the movie is stuff like 47 Ronin, which was not good. I, I heard nothing but bad from it. We should have, that would have been a nice pain train movie, but we started it. It after. was mostly frustrating because he was obviously shoehorned into the story, like last minute. They're like, well, we need a big star, so cut and paste and add Keanu Reeves' character in here awkwardly and, oh, really? and then make him the main character. Like, the movie. He doesn't exist in the actual real-life story of what happened. And if you excise him from the film entirely and nobody mentions him, the movie works perfectly fine and is much better. Hmm. But so because they shoot out, him in, they're going to charge <laughs> Well, and, like, the DVD for it doesn't even have the main character on it. It has Keanu Reeves instead, like, on the front of the cover. And on the back, none of the side pictures have the main character, and the main character isn't even mentioned. So it's it's kind of similar to, like, the, the 13th Warrior. Yeah. But... but that one, that one by default. I mean, it basically, yes, it's telling it his from his point of view, right. but but he's definitely not the main reason why. But I mean, the story is in the story. He's not the main leader of the group, but he is the central protagonist as an observer. It's mm -hmm. kind of like Bilbo isn't Thorin and Gandalf and everything. Like sure. Bilbo isn't the leader of this group, but he's the central storyteller. Sure. So he's the Hobbit. Forty Seven Ronin wasn't even that. Mm. It's like if for some reason Feely was played by uh, uh, Robert De Niro, <laughs> and so then he was the big guy on all the boxes. It's like Feely's tale, and and no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's like it's like actually having Robert De Niro's face all over the the cover of Stardust, and yeah, he kind of plays a very very small role in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> that movie is amazing, by the way. I love that movie. Where were we? Zappity. Ultra, so Ultron, yeah, yeah. Zappity. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> Uh, if you could remake any movie with Keanu, what would it be? Wait, wait. Which way are they asking this? Do I take a movie and remake it and add Keanu, or is it a movie with Keanu is being remade? If you could remake any movie with Keanu, right. what would it be? So I think am it's I remaking any movie a movie with add, Keanu, or am I remaking a movie and they're putting Ke Keanu Reeves in it? Ooh. We need clarification. We'll get back to this question. Oh. 
It's such good. It's potentially dead. Oh could my potentially god! Be a, it could be amazing. It could be an hour-long podcast. Oh, great. <laughs> oh. Uh, any of us participate in Extra Life? Um, it, it's something that we talked about a little bit on the side of trying to do something for Extra Life. Oh, the charity. Uh, the, the charity. Yeah. Um, I I kind of wanted to do something. I wanted to actually have like a. A live stream broadcast of of like a unbound game or yeah. something like that going on. I uh, it just didn't the pieces didn't fall enough for us to, to do it or even. I still like getting the, the Nathan Rantasword idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nathan Rantasword <laughs> is is pretty awesome. But we decided to have Nathan try to almost kill Jeremy during Extra Life and instead. Oh, I managed not to. <laughs> I'm not sure who I should congratulate or be mad. Oh, at, my God. I got real close a couple times. Like, I honestly just, I stopped and I thought, like, would it be funny if I just tackled him out of his chair and started strangling him under the table? And if I start, will I stop? <laughs> and if and, and I couldn't honestly say no to the second one of those. Like, the, the first one was a yes for a while. This would be funny if I started to pretend to kill him, but I couldn't guarantee that it would continue to be a pretend. <laughs> Maybe we should have a donation jar to keep Jeremy alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, eh, we're at hour five and there's no money in the jar. I'm You're sorry. But <laughs> choice. We will kill this rabbit or we will keep Jeremy alive. You will choose. Uh, so then that's somebody asked. choice. <laughs> so that's Abney Grumble. Uh, who's the most broken? Who's the boss combination from Vengeance Exegus? Exigence? I th <laughs> I haven't really looked at it very much. Mm, I've done yeah. too much thought so far. The best I've come up with has been Helga and Crix. I just I, I think Abby and in other the slam on things pretty... like Satixis that can hit you from a mile and a half away or after they dashed. Yeah, after they dashed. Yeah, that's and cool. their defended warden. Dash yeah. Satixis just walking around things to then. Oh yeah, that could be bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's probably over the line that they have two slams. Yeah. Yeah, that could be really bad. Yeah, I, I I think Abby too would be pretty sexy in any other faction. It'd be kind of neat to see her. Uh, she's already got some pretty top notch stuff to put that with. Yeah, well, I know, but I mean, like in in different four, factions, fortify too. plus the stone, and then giving like yeah. reach and flight and plus two speed and plus two mat to Earthborns. <laughs> that's that's fair. I I don't see why yeah. I would do that now. <laughs> that would be pretty good. I guess it's just we're gonna have to see it on the table more so. I mean, it's. Yeah, there's there's a lot of weird things like uh, taking Epo Epo Borka and dropping him in any faction that has like real fury control or management because he can do some really bad things with that feat. So you take Epic Borka, drop him in Legion instead. Yeah. So on a side note, if you guys out there are ever going to plan a who's the boss and you're not going to use our errata, just use common sense. Things like Rulik Warcaster, things like can only put uh, constructs in my battle group. That doesn't pertain to who's the boss. Because well, yeah, yeah. You, you can't take that literally, because otherwise somebody will roll up Radicus, and then they're like, oh, I, well, I can't put... I can put my Warjacks in this battle group. The other big one was that uh, we changed Carver, Carver's feet to be friendly faction Correct. Be, yeah. instead of being friendly pharaoh. Yeah, that was, that was meant, I assume, I, I assume that they might have something like a four-star syndicate... Uh, no, they said they never will. It's just so like think it's he doesn't benefit Gudrun and whatnot. Yeah, right. I mean, none of the current ones in, in Thornfall seem like they'd be broken if they were weapon masters. But I mean, they they have said multiple mm. times they're not going to have a four star style. Well, they do have a four style star style minions uh, pack. So it's called person. Scorn. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> True, or, or some of their theme forces yeah. tend to bring in things from the other other side yeah. too. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's. But as I, a general rule, they're not going to have that. Yeah, it, it's just use common sense when when figure out the rules there. And there's some things that we have in our FAQ for a reason because they are way too complicated to try to put in things like for uh, force matrix um, on uh, Nemo. Yeah, it's no. Just don't figure it out. <laughs> Zabity, Rumble. Uh, it's, uh, Caden says that, uh, Hordes was announced at, uh, Gen Con 2005. All right, yeah, so this one. Here we go. Yeah. Well, yeah, so this would be the 10-year anniversary of the announcement. announcement. It's yeah. the human announcement of the... So but it, it was still means there's a good April. chance of it for TempleCon, then. Uh, the at least for announcement. At, at the yeah. keynote yep. speech, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And then it could come out in 16. Uh, best caster you hate to play? Against or with? 
you hate to play. Best caster you hate to play. Oh, okay. So that doesn't answer my question. Well, I I, I think the intent is the caster that that you play and you don't like playing because they're really good. Oh, or, you're or really good, good or, or it takes the fun out of the game. You know, like some people really like to play Haley too. People are wrong. <laughs> then somebody should be checked. That should be the true check of the serial killer. Is like, did you cry at up in the first like twenty minutes of up? And do you like hit playing Haley 2? Or Haley 1. Or Haley 1. Do you enjoy playing as a Haley caster? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, Lost. You're doomed. If, if no is the both of them, then... Oh, it's both? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I play pigs, so I don't have anybody, a, a, anybody that's, you know, overly powerful. And I love playing all of them. Um, I don't like fielding epic magic very often. I just, I, it's either a combination of not having the right mindset, or he just seems bland to me. Oh man, I loved epic magic when I played trolls. Uh, it, it's not my thing. I, I'm all about Jarl. Jarl's yeah. the man. Yeah, he didn't exist back then. We had to make do with our melee lists. Uh -huh. <laughs> the closer we had to guns were, were, uh... Grim uh, was still out at that point. Grim yeah. had a gun! And yeah. then we had scatter gunners without the UA! And Grim could use those. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Yeehaw! I almost want Grim one feet back. No, oh, yes, new, new feet is yes. way better. New feet is way better. I I just want it to be more complicated. Yeah, no. I want to pick this point, and then you have to do a circle around. Your answer is wrong, sir. <laughs> yeah. I want a compass, and somebody has to pull out a sextant. Well. A sextant? Do you know what a sextant is? Yes, it's what you use the map <laughs> star. You thought it was the tent of the sextant? Yes, the sextant. Yeah, I want a sextant. Yeah. It's Don't a, you already have one? Sex robot, sex robot. Zappity. <laughs> <laughs> Grumble. Uh, how do you deal with a bad commission paint job? Is it accept acceptable to ask for a refund? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'd recommend getting a second opinion on the paint job before you do that, just to make sure your standards aren't... I work in close proximity with my commission painter so that I'm able to give feedback as it's going yeah. on. Yeah, that's, yeah. not everybody's got that luxury, though. That's true. Well, I mean, you, first of all, you have to do research on, to, on mm -hmm. the person that's painting your stuff and ask for updates. Yeah. You know, they should be able to give you updates here yeah. and there. Uh, if, if it's not something you like, you just have to tell them. Because yeah. if... And you have to tell them early, because otherwise... Yeah, that's the thing. More feedback, the more often you're touching base, the more often you're checking. You know, even if it's just photos, it won't be perfect, but, I mean, the more often you can give feedback, the better your final quality will be. Yeah, it's like going in for a haircut. You know, if you let them finish and then you don't say you don't like it, there's only so many options you have. Yeah. <laughs> and it also kind of depends also, like, is this somebody, like, it's a one-time commission, like, you heard good things and you did it once, or is this somebody that's painted stuff for you before and they just screwed up this one? Yeah, you know, because you're gonna you're gonna handle that differently. You're gonna just be like Andy, like, dude, seriously, what happened this time? You I know, just come I, on. I uh, <laughs> I, I sneezed. You yeah. don't like doing eyes. So you just bought some of those plastic Google eyes and put them on. Oh, I've got a big bag of those. That'd, That'd be, be amazing. amazing. Those I are going on your one. I, said, I saw a Legion army that had googly eyes in every model, and that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> jelly ass with big googly <laughs> eyes. Googly eyes and fake mustaches. <laughs> I Proteus was those also those. amazing with that. <laughs> God, seriously, Proteus, so good. But yeah, you just to prevent a bad commission job, you really have to be proactive with the painter. And generally, I, I don't think a painter is going to hate it, and unless or hate you, unless it's something that you waited until after you got the models had them. I would say the other thing is, if possible, don't do you know. I'm going to drop off this entire army, and then four months later, I'm going to pick it up, and this will be the first time we've touched base. You know, yeah, yeah. If you can batch it up. Also, much better because then once again, you can react, you can provide feedback. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yep. And if it's like one model and they're normally good, again, like I said, like don't be afraid to be like, I, you know, this color scheme maybe touch this up because if you can get the one good, then going forward to the bigger ones, you know, like like Dan said, don't give them it all at once. Like test the waters. <laughs> and yes, you can ask for your money back if it sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They may not. They may not oblige you, but you can ask. You can ask. Yeah. Give yeah. them the model. Say, here you go. If you think it's good, you can have it as a showpiece piece. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that might be the other thing is you know. If you don't buy a model, one. you might just have to say, "I, you know, I'm not sure if I want to pay for this, but I also am not going to take the product." Yeah, yeah. Unless it was your model to, to start off with. But even if it was, I mean, it was one thing if it's like a ten dollar, you know, warrior model versus sure. war jack. Yeah, I suppose you could take the same figure and just turn it around and, and resell it. There's a chance somebody else may. <laughs> you like could. It. You could just eBay it as a painted model. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> that was something off air I'll have to talk about. <laughs> uh, so, would you play a spell draft? Who's the boss? No, oh, no. no. Uh, it no. Sound, it's, that's one of those ideas that sounds great, but I mean, we had two people clock themselves because they couldn't remember, and they were having trouble keeping track of cards from five factions they didn't play. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's basically the the closest we got was the one where you're going to spin the wheel twice and get one <laughs> caster's stat card and one caster's spell card. Yeah, that's but at least that would be a solid that. spell card and not the draft, and even that would be crazy. It right? would just take yeah. take way too long for the draft. It's it's already complicated enough anyway. Mm -hmm. well, it's confusing for the opponent because then they they see the one figure and then they go like, "Wait, now what is yeah. happening?" Well, it'd be one thing too if you got like. You know, all right, we have eight people here. We're going to do a who's the boss spell draft. But, you know, casters are going to stay the entire eight-person pod. We're going to draft once, and we're going to play three games of it. That wouldn't be so bad, but every round switching everything up, you're Or the other way around, draft one, draft once and then spin the casters. Yeah, wouldn't necessarily or something like that, but it's one of those things that does not scale at all. No, yeah. a small, yeah, eight would be the most people. I mean, yeah. think, like, if you want to do it with two people, where you mm. randomized a caster, and it would, like, but not a full event. That would be insane. Very diminishing returns on yep. the fun. Zabity. Girl, Zabity. Uh, we're almost done here, so do you guys find it different streaming live with video versus traditional podcasting? This week I've ignored the camera, except to look at it a couple times from telling anecdotes like this one. Yeah, I barely acknowledge its existence. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. I think that's the way we have to do it, otherwise, mm -hmm. otherwise you get freaked out. Right. Dan, Dan's been pretty much the focal point for this entire <laughs> podcast, though, because he's in the center. But yeah, no, I I just ignore it. What we need to do is like pay to have like somebody in a gorilla costume walk past the door like one time during the podcast, and then like somebody just juggling or whatever. Like there's there's a whole lot of plot going on out there. <laughs> yeah. Just not acknowledge it, not yeah. acknowledge it at all. Oh, well, that that's that's the best type of jokes is when you don't acknowledge that yeah. something that's going on around you. Yeah. It'll yes. be a game for the viewers. <laughs> like, it was Carmen San Diego. I saw her. And <laughs> tilts her fedora and then leaves. Just somebody walk by the door like. Oh, I saw it's a steamroller beta. Like, I wonder if anybody saw when Brian peeked in. <laughs> Probably didn't. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see Brian peek in? Well, I did. I'm wondering if the viewers did. Oh, yeah. You yeah. didn't want to see it. There's no fans. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's basically it. Uh, basically, some other comments about uh, about uh, escalating uh, for trying not to kill Jeremy. Like, $5 for a poke, $10 <laughs> for a light slap, <laughs> $50 for a nipple twist. <laughs> We could fundraise that way. That's a good charity, man. Yeah, I, did. Yeah. I think so. We never got to our Keanu Reeves remakes. Yeah. <gasps> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Silence of the Lambs. He plays Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one with him as Jar Jar. No. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Episode one, he's Anakin, and nobody acknowledges the fact that he's a forty-five-year-old man. Like, <laughs> I like that. He's better. fifty. Yeah, yeah. He aged well. He has. Mm. Well, when you're made of rock and cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Jeez. That's just mean. Yep. Well, half of that is. I mean, if you told somebody was made out of rock. You know. Yeah. Stacked. It's cardboard parts demeaning. <laughs> True. You just get wet. You just shrivel. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's like telling something made out of pretty and stupid. Like, well, I, I get um. Oh. I as a lovable, lovable actor like Keanu Reeves, I, I think I might, I might be towing a line here. Evil Dead, the Evil Dead trilogy, with Keanu Reeves playing the part of Ash. Like it could I take his like whole new the like blood sprays out of the walls where and he just goes whoa <laughs> yeah it would be like a stoner goes to a cabin in the woods <laughs> they have that it's called cabin in the woods <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing the Bruce Campbell cameo in the remake of his own movie with someone else playing him yeah he wasn't in the Evil Dead remake <gasps> no was he no oh, I think noticed something else no, I just I popped in my head being John Malkovich. Just being, being Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu Reeves. God, that movie's so good, being John Malkovich. Oh. I just want to go watch that again. Yeah. So like, that's somebody having fun at their own expense. Like, I salute yeah. John Malkovich for that movie. Do you, you, you saw, you read the, or listened to the, the audio commentary on that. Yeah. The, the, the guy that has a say card because he threw a can at Malkovich. Yeah. 
Like there's there's, <laughs> there's this guy that throws a, a, a empty soda can at, or beer can at yeah, Malkovich, yeah. heads up Malkovich and hits him in the head, completely unscripted. But because he spoke, he has a, a speaking role in the film, which not only like doubled his pay, but qualified him for a SAG card. Yeah, he's in the Screen Actors wow. Guild Union because he spoke in a film. Yeah, because they wanted to keep it because it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we should probably get to uh, to our recommendations because we're coming close on to two hours and. I'll start, because I have two recommendations, but I forgot one of them. And the <laughs> one that I remember, I don't actually know anything about, but I'm going to blind really recommend it because... So we've got two halves of recommendation we no, have to no, put them together? This is a full, legit recommendation, but I'm doing it on blind faith, because it's at, like, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and, like, 8 out of 10 on um, IMDb, and I need to recommend it this episode because you need it for Halloween, which is that there's an independent New Zealand horror comedy called Housebound about this woman who has legal problems, so she's, like, put under house arrest with her mom, and it turns out their house is haunted, and it's supposed to be goddamn fucking amazing. And if I know anything about New Zealand ho- horror comedies like yeah. Black Sheep, yeah. I know not, the New not Zealand... Not the No, 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 the New yeah. Zealand horror comedy Black Sheep. Like, I trust... So this movie, I trust the industry, I trust the fact that it's got... N- stellar reviews from every source whatsoever and it's not like Amazon you, it's not on Netflix for free you'd have to pay like five bucks to Amazon or somebody to stream it but you should watch it for Halloween I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the five bucks and watch it but since I won't be able to tell people next week to watch it this Halloween I'm blindly recommending it this week I'm gonna recommend a similar from the same area a Halloween film that they need to watch and that is Undead Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is that Australian? Is that Australian? Yeah, that's yeah, Australian. That's Australian. not New Zealand, it's Australia. But same, same. not the same people. I'm sure that that's, you know, yeah, probably but, offensive to both countries when they listen. But, <laughs> but uh, Undead is a, it's it's a zombie film. And you need to watch the whole thing to get it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's one of my favorite stupid lines in a movie, but it'd be a gigantic spoiler to mention it, so I won't. <laughs> but I do like the guy that always whips out two pistols. Every time there's trouble, he just whips out two pistols and shoots at everything. And then there's a scene where they're all naked, and, like, a zombie shows up, and he just whips out two pistols and starts shooting at the zombie. <laughs> and everybody's just like, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, that movie is, it's... It is. It is very good. I, I just. It's, it's very my, stupid. Yeah, very <laughs> stupid. But it actually has a, a pretty decent plot to it. It's yeah. it's not like Sharknado stupid. No, you know, it, it's actually in, engrossing in that regards. Right. But it definitely has a naked man whipping out two pistols. Yes, it never... has. <laughs> it has some obnoxious action sequences in it. Yeah. But, well, I didn't say that was a bad thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't saying bad either. All right. Uh, my recommendation, uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter are both hitting good old games tomorrow. Ooh! Ten bucks each. Ooh! What? What? X-Wing and TIE Fighter. Ooh. Uh, on, on good old games? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's supposed to be tomorrow. Ooh! Good, good Ooh. stuff. Which is making it even more difficult, because I'm already resisting buying Beyond Earth before War Machine Weekend. <laughs> now I got something else, which, although I can't find the USB joystick at my house right now, which is the only thing that may keep me from buying those right away. <laughs> I... I unpacked my GameCube, and I realized that I have Rogue Squadron for it. So, I've been <laughs> been playing that a little bit. It's been good. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. I'm, I'm going to recommend another movie. Um, I'm hoping to get the name right, too, because I was... I, I got to watch it when I was already half in the tank, but Skeleton of Cadabra. The Lost Skeleton of Cadabra. Cadabra, okay. The yeah. Lost Skeleton of Cadabra. Yes. Yeah, I I saw I saw it for the first time Saturday night, and oh. I was laughing the entire time. I, that's one of those movies I used to force people to watch, and I just it, haven't it, in the last a, few it, years. It's a hard sell. Like, it is like, a hard sell. Sure, a fifty science fiction movie, but they know it's a fifty science fiction movie. Well, the people in the movie, yeah, that's the thing. It's like it is an MST3K movie. It is a shitty Roger Corman movie sure. with the yeah. except. On purpose, it's like that. Is it right. actually Roger Corman doing no, it? No, 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 no. no. That, that it's that movie. style of movie. Okay, yeah, like, it's, the the movie is like 2006, I yeah. think. It's okay. not old. It's well, not, oh, but God, the skeleton's one of my favorite characters. Everything. Like I still, every once in a while, they go, "That's how stupid you are." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I sleep now. So there's a scene where basically the skeleton like resting on some rocks and they're basically y- yoinking the string. It's like <laughs> climb down the rocks like I do. <laughs> yes, that's such a good line. <laughs> <laughs> Animala, who is half human, half seven different forest creatures. Yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't work. Yeah, no, yes, it does. Isn't that up? <laughs> I have to make a skeleton meteor with a crowbar and lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you, the stupid one. Oh, I'm going to go watch that movie again now. <laughs> Please, have a seat. <laughs> Bend in the middle. <laughs> uh, yes, I agree. Okay. Always agree. <laughs> Always agree. Always agree. 
All right. So, <laughs> did you remember your other recommendation? Mutant. <laughs> Mutilate. I wonder. <laughs> nope. I'm just gonna quote Lost Scouts in a Cadaver <laughs> for the next, or the rest of time. All right. So, where we call it the end? Yeah, I can't remember the other recommendation. I'll do it next week. All right. We'll figure it out. Zappity. Thanks for watching. Right, well, bye. Later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. I <laughs>